by the way, he wrote this for me. We're going to have an awesome, awesome time tonight. The Valley Patriot Bash is something that has come to be known as a night of amnesty. It's a night where political enemies and personal adversaries put aside their egos and their differences and come together and do some really, really good things for some really, really good people. And as I look around the room, I see just that. I think it's amazing how many people we have here and it, it's a real tribute to Tom's efforts as well. Tonight, the Valley Patriot will be giving out awards to police officers, firefighters, veterans who help other veterans, all of them heroes, and a community service award for some special people who make personal sacrifices to help those most in need. And on top of all of that, we're giving out scholarships to deserving local high school students to the tune of, and I will look for the lovely Maria, Somewhere's gonna give me, someone's gonna give me this total. Because that's what it says here. Someone's going to give me the total. $32,500. $32,500. We want to remind everyone that half of the proceeds from our raffle tonight goes directly to Clear Path for Veterans New England. And see one of our, our ticket sellers. We also have a 50-50 raffle. I, I think that is, uh, it went up to $3,200 at the last bash. And believe me, I think we could all use $3,200 right about now. Um, before we start, I want to thank some of the people who donated their services tonight. The Lawrence Firefighters Relief for always welcoming us. Henry's Jewelry and Awards. They donate all their profits on the awards and they only charge us their costs. <laughs> DJ Rick Bellante, who got the mic to work for me, yeah. he donates all his services and the uplighting every single year for free. If you need a DJ, definitely go see Rick. Our buddies, Mike Agricola, he's serving the food, I think I saw him somewhere. He donated such a wonderful meal tonight and he donates to TMF and helps us feed the homeless. Bob Westcott from Copy Labs, who donated the programs tonight. Santiago Reyes Cruz, who is that? Who's still not here. He's still not here. He's still not here. But he's at Lawrence Cares, and he's paying for the hall tonight. So that's pretty important. Yeah, show them the chat. Lawrence Community Television, who are here taping tonight, thank Yay! you. So there are a lot of people who have tried very hard to silence Tom and shut down the Valley Patriot over the last 18 years. They've filed lawsuits. Some have threatened his advertisers. Some have called boycotts. Some have even threatened his life for reporting on the streets of Lawrence. But 18 years later, the Valley Patriot is still here. And that's only because all of us are here. He needs our support. He cannot do it without everyone here. So let's start this show. Can we get uh, Randy Carter and John Cuddy to come up to the front of the stage, please? They are somewhere here, I promise. Randy Carter and John Cuddy. Anybody? Bueller? Hi. To start off the program tonight, I'm happy to introduce Navy veteran John Cuddy, who also writes the Valley Patriots monthly tribute to the local veterans called Heroes in the Mist. He's going to do the first one. Where's John Cuddy? He's in the mic. 
Where's John Cuddy? Paging John Cuddy. Check the bar. Somebody check under the bar. He might be under there. God, you're killing me, guys. Paging John Cuddy. He was just here three seconds ago. Well, we're getting off to a great start here, huh? Wow. I know. All right, so listen, while we're waiting for John Cuddy, I'm going to do this. I hadn't planned... Where's the Mr. Wolf? I hadn't planned on speaking in the first half of the program, so you guys would be dying for me when I got up to give my speech. While we're waiting for John Cuddy, paging John Cuddy. John Cuddy. All right, we're gonna hold off on that one for a minute. Okay, listen, uh, before we start, we have two tables here of Gold Star families. And th they, if you don't know what a Gold Star family is, they are family members of American troops that have died in service of, oh good, They're, who died in service of their, of their country. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lowe, who runs Jasmine's Computer Services. Dave LaCroix here? If you're here, thank you, Dave, for turning me on to the Lowe's. I had a computer problem one day, he says, I got a guy. I said, I know everybody's got a guy. He said, no, no, I got a guy. Brought my computer to Mr. Lowe when he took care of my computer. And ever since, he and his family have come to this bash because unbeknownst to me at the time, the Lowe family lost Ed, uh, Edmund Lowe, their son, who was the first American troop to die in Afghanistan. And he, they come here every single year to help us with this bash. And over the last year, Mrs. Lowe uh, sadly passed away. And I've had this picture in my office, hanging on my office of Mr. and Mrs. Lowe holding a copy of our book, Heroes in Our Midst, which is a tribute to all, a whole bunch of local veterans. And I wanted to give this to Mr. Lowe and his family because I've been looking at Mrs. Lowe's smiling face from my office for the last four years since they took the picture. And I thought maybe they should have this in their office so that they can see her every day when they, get, when they come into their office. So here. When we, when we miss Rosa Lowe, her first name was Rosa. Rosa Lowe, thank you, Mr. Lowe. Thank you, All right. thank you so much for being here. All right, let's get Randy Carter up here. I guess our award recipient for the first award isn't here yet, so we usually have a rule you don't get the award if you're not here, but we're going to hold it for her because she's a hero veteran. Do you have a script there? I do. Call up your Who is it? Oh. Where's Jason Gilbert? Is Jason Gilbert here? I think I know you would drink. Come on up, Jason. Jason Gilbert from Clear Path for Veterans New England. He used to work with John Radka at Veterans Northeast Outreach. He's a hero veteran who didn't just go off and serve his country, but when he came back, he dedicated himself to helping other veterans that were having a hard time. So thank you for being here, Jason. Well, as usually, Tommy screwed this up, but that's okay. We We'll get through it. Um, as you know, Jason Gilbert is the recipient of the award tonight. Jason grew up in Lawrence, actually. He grew up right down the street, not far from here. And he, he came to a point in his life where he had to decide, was he going to stay here and hang out with his friends, or... Wrap up that sentence and then call for calls. Wrap up that sentence and then call for calls. Change number 40. <laughs> Colors, post...
Present. Arms. You can either do a pledge or you can ask the senior member in the room to do it. You can either do the pledge or you can ask a senior member in the room to do the pledge. So, Tommy would like to have us all say the Pledge of Allegiance. So, I'll, I'll start it off. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order. Colors. All right, see if you guys can have them move back and you move forward. There you go. And now, one step back. One step back. March. Thanks, Tommy. So as I was saying, Jason grew up in the city, right down the street. He decided the best thing for him to do was to uh, get out of here and join the Marine Corps. And in the Marine Corps, he learned leadership. He learned how to work as an individual, but he also learned how to work as a team. Jason then came home to build his dream. Got married to his wife, Melanie. They bought a house, had kids, great job. Then economic struggle hit, and Jason himself became homeless. He became a statistic. He became homeless, but he didn't sit back and wait. He knew he needed to protect and provide for his family. He knew he had VA benefits. He went to school. While he was at school, he was referred to Veterans Northeast, where he met John Ratka. John Ratka took him in, and John Ratka didn't see a statistic. He saw somebody who needed help, but also that wanted to give and had a lot to give. Jason finished school and actually was hired by John to work on the programs that he had started. John became a mentor and, this, and Jason learned from him and took the knowledge that John passed to him and used this knowledge not only to help him become, make him become not a statistic again, but also help other veterans not to become a statistic. Jason has worked with a lot of homeless veterans. There's a lot of stories out there, and there's probably some people in this room that he's helped that he's helped you, and you didn't even know it. Thank you, Jamie. I myself have learned a lot from this from Jason, because what John instilled in him, he's also instilled in me. And together, I think over the past eight years, we've housed over 3,000 homeless veterans in this area. Unfortunately, probably one of the saddest days in both of our lives was when John Radker passed away in February of 2019. But that didn't stop Jason. Jason found a way to say yes. Jason found a way to continue the mission. Jason Gilbert is now the Chief, Operati Chief Operation Officer at Clear Path for Veterans New England, who again I work for. Jason Gilbert is a Marine Corps veteran who served honorably from 1998 to 2002. He served over 12 years working in veteran nonprofit experiences with expertise in veteran homelessness and veteran programs. I lost my place. With his nonprofit experience, he's been able to implement and manage various nonprofit, various programs to help the veterans in need. He is, he is well experienced in the day to day operation of nonprofits while building housing supports for other veterans. Jason has been instrumental in acquiring numerous federal and state and local homeless grants to support veteran homelessness initiative. Jason was instrumental in providing the knowledge and expertise to assist in ending veteran homelessness in multiple communities to include Lowell and Lynn, two of the hardest hit cities for homelessness. While program managing of other veteran administrative supportive services for veterans and families program, he currently maintains a seat on the Massachusetts Balance of State Advisory Board and numerous task forces to end veteran homelessness. Jason has shown his tremendous commitment to ending veteran homelessness entirely in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Southern New Hampshire. His passion is noted in the network he has built over the last 10 years with federal and state partners and those fighting the same fight. Jason. Jason and his wife, Melanie, live in Salem, New Hampshire, and they have three children and one granddaughter. So it's my honor to present this award to Jason Gilbert from Clip After Thank you,
we have John Cuddy? <laughs> we don't. We're going to bounce him here. Get him there. 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 All right, give me a second. I actually want to ask the ROTC to stay exactly where they are. Is this where we are, Tom? Okay. Um, I also want to remind everyone, don't forget to get your raffle tickets, 50-50. I think we have people going around. And I just want to thank Salvatore's again, Mike, uh, for uh, this wonderful meal. We love you, Mike. Uh, when I call your name, please come up and stand to the right of the stage. Eric Melanson. Lawrence Mayor Brian DePena. Octavian Spanner. Hopefully these people are here. If not, Anyone else can come in, I guess, and stand in their place? Double next year. There you go. Lawrence, Keller, Lauren, Lawrence Counselor Estella Reyes. <laughs> Lawrence Counselor Stephanie Infante. <laughs> Lawrence Council President Mark LaPlante. And I'd also like any members of the Lawrence High alumni or school committee or anyone else who contributed to the Lawrence High Scholarship. Commander, why don't you relieve um, Cadet Catherine Euclid is here tonight. Is she here? Oh, you're right here. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> it is with great pleasure. And Marcos Davis. It is with great pleasure that we present to you this award and this plaque, and thank you for all that you have done so far and all that you are going to do. We are very proud of you. Thank you, Catherine. Much is it? Tell people how much it is. It's on the back of the check. Tommy wants me to let you know that this award that she is receiving is four thousand two hundred and twenty-five dollars. And we'd like to ask Mayor and Depena to um, present the, uh, the the little plaque that we did for. Uh, for did you present already? That shows you how out of touch I am tonight. You can tell we're a little off book tonight because we honestly didn't expect this many people to show up. So we spent like the last ten minutes while you guys were coming trying to set up more tables. So thank you. And I just want to let you know who this who this young girl, Kat, Katherine Euclid, is and why she got this award, why she got this scholarship for over four thousand dollars. She is the battalion commander, rank cadet, lieutenant colonel in the junior ROTC. She was accepted at Assumption University, UMass Lowell, UMass Boston, Bridgewater State, and she's waiting to hit the UMass Amherst as her number one pick. She's in the process of enlisting in the Massachusetts Army National Guard with the hopes of being a military police officer. And I just wanna say that I'm very honored to be able to do this every year with the exception of all the COVID hysteria, we weren't here for that, but uh, I'm very honored to be able to do this, especially for Lawrence High School, because I graduated from Lawrence High School, and it took me 11 years to put enough money together to go back to school after I graduated from high school. And so to be able to be, to get up here and be able to raise money for kids that can't afford to go to school, it's a real thrill for me, because I was one of those kids that couldn't afford to go to school. And, and again, for a guy who, it took me 11 years to go back, it's a real thrill for me to be able to give a scholarship. And by the way, I didn't pay a dime of this. This all came from you guys. 
This is all donations from people like Pavel Payano and Mia Capena and Frank Cirillo and Marcos Devers and all of the people who kicked in for this scholarship. And they all deserve a round of applause. And we will be posting everyone's name on Facebook uh, when we're done. Everybody that uh, posted to this. Uh, and I guess, Commander, you can uh, relieve colors if you'd like. Right. Please. Right. I think we. I think we filled it. We just did it. Yep. So we're on page. Gary, colors. He's staying, right? Forward. March. Yep. Page sixteen. So I get nothing on that page. What do you want me to say? We're going to keep Eric Melanson up here because we've got something special. Can we have... Is Karen Glendie here? She's not here, is she? She really is here? Yes. Karen Glendie, why don't you come on up? Linda Arvanidis. And Linda Arvanidis. There it is. Eileen Duff didn't make it tonight, did she? We'd love to have her here for this if she could. Um, oh, oh, she's here. Okay, very good. Thank you. How about Cassie Bonanno? Is Cassie Bonanno in the room? And Brenda Rossi, who there are times I want to kill and there are times when I love her to death. Brenda. I love you, you know I love you. Karen, we have, um, most people may not know who Phil Glendine was, but Phil Glendine, and I always put an N at the end of his name when I say it, I'm sorry, it's Glendine. When Phil Glendine uh, called me about 10 years ago, out of the blue, I had only kind of known him from seeing him around, I know he worked at Lawrence High School, and he said, I wanna let you know that I'm bringing the Special Olympics to Lawrence High School. And all of the Special Olympic participants came to the Veterans Memorial Stadium that year. And we took pictures and videos and we put them online. And uh, he called me afterwards in tears on the phone saying, you know, I've been calling the Tribune and calling the Tribune and calling the Tribune and they never got back to me. And the Valley Patriots, the only one that showed up here for the Special Olympics, will you come every year for me? And I said, Phil, if you're asking, it's hard to say no because you're doing such great work. He used to come to this bash every year. He used to give us money for the Lawrence High Scholarship every year. But his real passion was kids with special needs. So, I was very, I was very upset to learn that within the last year or so, Phil passed away. And knowing that he was a staple at this bash, when we decided to do a special needs scholarship for a special needs student who actually got into college, I thought, you know, let's leave Phil's name out of the program this year to surprise Karen and let her know that we're going to, from now on, name this scholarship every year for a special needs student for Phil Glendai. This is going to be the Phil Glendai Scholarship. And I took this picture at his very last Special Olympics. And I wanted to present this to you. That's also been hanging up on my wall. And can we have Marcos Devers come on up? Marcos, I love you. <laughs> and there's nobody who has helped the special needs community in Massachusetts more than my good friend Marcos Devers, state representative from Lawrence. So Marcos, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like for you and Karen Glendai to present this check to Cassie Bonanno for college for $4,760. Yeah. 
what team? Do you want me to just, I'll, I'll, just, yeah, I'll just, I'll add with it. I understand that John Cuddy has come back from Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Is he back now? That's great. John Cuddy, why don't you come on up? And while we're waiting for him to come up, I want to thank my good friend, Jeff Deal, who is in the crowd. He's running for governor. And Chris Doty, who is also running for governor. We have two candidates running for governor in the room tonight, and I think that's pretty special. Where's John Cuddy? Here he is. Now, most people might not know John. John's not only a hero veteran, but he writes our Heroes in Our Midst column every month to pay tribute to a local veteran. And not just because they went off and, and went to war and got shot at. That's good enough, right? But the reason why we write this column and John writes this column is to highlight veterans that not only served their country, but then came back and decided to just dedicate their life to helping veterans while they were here at home. So thank you, John, for doing that. Thank you, I was not at Dunkin' Donuts, I was out having a cigar before the Democrats take that away from us. <laughs> Folks, um, every month I write about a different veteran in the Valley Patriot, and um, I've met guys from World War II, Korea, Vietnam, a lot of the folks I wrote about are here. I just had uh, lunch at the um, uh, Irish Cottage with Henry Nazaritz from uh, Lowell. He grew up in North Andover, but lives in Lowell. He was with Patton's Third Army at the Battle of the Bulge. And we went to the Irish uh, Cottage for lunch to celebrate his 106th birthday in my 60th, and Henry was 106 on New Year's Day. And he drove, I paid, and um, we had a nice lunch at the Irish Cottage. But um, tonight I'm, I'm gonna talk about a veteran who um, I just recently met and is doing a lot for veterans and aspires to help other veterans and um, I'd like to bring up a uh, veteran of Afghanistan, served with the 101st Airborne in Afghanistan, uh, is airborne qualified, um, and uh, now, now a student uh, at uh, UMass Lowell and very active in helping other veterans. So this year's 2022 John Ratka Hero Veteran Award is going to be Janet Mason. Jeanette, Jeanette, come on up here. You're our hero veteran for uh, 2002. Served in Afghanistan, 101st Airborne, full-time student at UMass Lowell. expect to speak up here but I appreciate it and um, I've loved my time at UML and I'm ready to graduate and move forward and continue my education and help other communities as well so thank you so much Before we go any further, uh, can you please put your hands together for Gold Star Mother? I can't see that. Sally Raymond, I'm sorry, I just couldn't read it. She is the mother of Pierre Raymond, who lost his life from Lawrence in the line of duty in the Middle East.
We remember Pierre, and, and we remember when the Veterans Memorial Stadium was dedicated, and you were all there for that, and we appreciate that, too. All right, moving on with our program. Can we please have Brianna Trachtenberg and her family come to the front of the stage? Also, is there anyone here from uh, the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe? If they are here, please come to the front. Ryan Hamilton, I saw you by the bar, so I know you're there. Come on up. And we were going to have a former school committee member, Jana Natale, come up, but she had to leave to get her daughter, so... So I'm filling in for her. I was on the school committee with her, and we share the same name with a different pronunciation, so I'm sure she won't mind. That's why Tom likes to say, it's Jana, or it's Jana. Uh, can we also have Methuen Counselors uh, Eunice Ziegler, if she's here? Hey, Eunice! Jessica Finicaro, Joel Ferretra, and anyone else who donated to the scholarship, can we please just have them line up in front? Just. All right, first we want to thank Dave Garofalo of Two Guys Smoke Shop and Studio 21 Podcast Cafe for donating $2,100 for the scholarship. This scholarship was started this year by Dave for a student going into communications, journalism, or broadcasting. This year, the scholarship winner is Brianna Trachtenberg. Brianna is a graduating senior at Methuen High School. She is in the National Honor Society, the History Honor Society, and the Science National Honor Society. She's also a member of the Methuen High School Marching and Concert Band. Throughout high school, she has been on the honor roll list and president of her Temple's youth group. Next year, she plans to attend Quinnipiac University and major in journalism. The Valley Patriots' first Studio 21 Podcast Cafe Scholarship winner, Brianna Trachtenberg, We'll present, we are going to present you with a total of $4,570. He wants more pictures. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, Jessica Finicaro is a former member of the Greater Lawrence Tech School Committee. And currently, she serves as a member of the Methuen City Council, and she's in her third term. She's been a member of the Valley Patriot Bash Committee since the very beginning, and she convinced Tom to start a scholarship for students graduating from the Tech. Ladies and gentlemen, Jessica Finicaro. Jessica Finicaro, thank you guys so much for being here. I'm so impressed with uh, everything that people have done to put together so many impressive scholarships. 
Uh, this one in particular was really exciting. It's some great students from the Greater Lawrence Tech. I'll give some description of uh, why they're so deserving, but if you meet them here tonight, you'll see firsthand just why. Giancy and Yerlani, Batista J J Jesus, the daughters of Louise and Tanya Batista, Methuen, Massachusetts. Both Giancy and Yerlani are students at Greater Lawrence Tech School. Giancy is currently studying in the Dental Assisting Career Program, and Yerlani is studying in the Medical Assisting Career Program. Congratulations. Yerlani and Giancy will both be attending Middlesex Community College in the fall and will study further in their career areas. Giancy and Yerlani have been successful in their coursework at Greater Lawrence. Giancy has a 4.37 GPA and is currently ranked third. And Yerlani has a 4.17 GPA and is ranked 10th out of a class of 397 students in the class of 2022. Yerlani and Giancy have never backed away from an academic challenge and they are currently enrolled in the dual enrollment classes in English and History through Middlesex Community College. Giancy was awarded the Resselaire Polytechnic Institute Book Award as a junior. Giancy and Yerlani were both awarded a John and Abigail Annum scholarship due to their outstanding performance in the Massachusetts Comprehensive Assessment Exams. Yerlani and Giancy have been members of the Reggie Leaders Program and the Rising Leader Club, helping to mentor new underclassmen as they transition to Great Lawrence Tech. Giancy and Yerlani have also volunteered at numerous school functions in many community facilities throughout their different career areas. Giancy is currently employed through our school's cooperative, cooperative education program at the Methuen Smiles Dental Office and Yerlani at the Greater Lawrence Family Health Center Vaccine Clinic. I just also want to recognize Tim Cusack, uh, guidance counselor at Greater Lawrence Tech, who is here tonight to cheer them on, as well as her parents, Louis and Tanya Batista, and her sister, Joan. Congratulations to your whole family. Thank you for giving us this award, and we will continue um, with our hard work. Thank you. And just so that you know, with this scholarship, we posted it online three weeks ago and in three weeks on Facebook, we were able to raise $2,285 for each of these students for a total of $4,570. Where's Ronnie Marsan? Ronnie Marsan here? I want to thank Ronnie Marsan for, for donating $1,000 to this scholarship. Come on up, Ronnie. You know, not for anything, but every year on Veterans Day, Ronnie takes money out of his pocket and pays for breakfast to any veteran who shows up at the Country Kitchen in Methuen on Veterans Day. And I went, thank you, Ronnie. And I went last year to take a picture. I, you know, I get up very late when I, I don't sleep, I don't get in the morning. But I got up at like 10.30 and said, well, he's there till 11, I'll go see if there's a few people left. And I jumped in my car and I went to Country Kitchen and there was Ronnie with his wife, Diane, and they were standing at Country Kitchen and there was no place still to sit. There was still a line at the door of veterans who wanted breakfast and Ronnie was there to pay for every single one of their breakfast on Veterans Day. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. And I'm gonna have Lisa Williams from AFC Urgent Care, one of our greatest advertisers they've been with us for a long time, Lisa Williams, and Zaka, who's here. I, I, thank you very much, Zaka, for coming. Thank you. Um, we're gonna have uh, Ronnie and Lisa present the checks to uh, Gianni and Yurulani. Did I say it right, Yurulani? Say it again? Yurenli, I'm sorry, Yurenli. And Gianni. there's Yurenli, and there's Gianni, and I think we got them both right. Okay, and we'll have you guys do the presentation so Rich can get some pictures for the Valley Patriot. It's a nice little newspaper. You guys should pick that up. It's actually pretty good.
Brianna, I guess we gave you the wrong, the wrong uh, envelope. Brianna Trachenberg, your envelope's up here. If she's still here. Thank you, Nancy. Well, you don't even know where we are. I got you. So, we just have one more thing before our comedian, Eric Spagnoli, comes up to entertain us. Very excited to hear him. He's been cracking me up all night. Not really, but we're hoping he does. Okay, so now, a man who needs no introduction, but he's gonna get one because he wrote one for me. He wrote the state's current public records law. He has been in movies, documentaries, national and TV. He's been in music videos and likes to show everyone them when he has a chance. He has published three books. He did a radio for more than 30 years. He currently does the Paying Attention podcast, and he also helps TMF feed the homeless. He is the most loyal friend you could ever have, and I will say something off script, because he's very humble, and I would say, as controversial as he can be sometimes, everyone should be more like Tom. He would literally give you the shirt off his back if he thought you needed it. So you may love him, you may hate him, and if you hate him, he loves it, so that's okay. But Valley Patriot publisher, my very good friend, Tom Duggan. All right, guys, now listen, um, I'm, I'm really, I'm sorry. Tom's a bit wary, I apologize, I just screwed up your microphone. Um, a couple of things, I'm glad that the scholarship students that we gave awards to are still sticking around because I have a, a few words for them. You know, this is, uh, but before I start, where's Mike Agricola? Is Mike Agricola still here from Salvatore's? Thank you, Michael, for a wonderful, he donates the food every year at the Bash for free. And this isn't crappy food either. This is like butternut squash ravioli and chicken palm, and I understand it was very good. Where's Mike Gagliardi, you magnificent bastard? Where are you? Come on, raise your hand, Matt Mike. Come on, Mike Gagliardi, and where are you? He's very, he's very small, so you might not see him. We can call him the midget. He's not here. Well, that's too bad because we have his award from 2014. <laughs> because when we got up to announce his award in 2014, he wasn't in the room and we panicked for like three days trying to figure out if Mike's gonna be mad at us. Because I'll tell you one thing, there's one person on the planet you don't want mad at you and that's Mike Gagliotti from Laborers Union Local 175. So I kept calling him and calling him and calling him to let him know that he missed his award. And I thought he had left early because he was mad. And he finally called me back and said, no, Tom, you don't understand. I came to your bash, I was at your bash, and I went to get my first drink, and this beautiful woman came over and asked me if, I mind, if I'd mind taking her somewhere else to eat. And so it was you or a beautiful woman, so I'm sorry I wasn't in the room. You would have done the same thing. And I have to be honest with you, I would have done the same exact freaking thing. <laughs> so we have his award, but apparently maybe he got lucky again this year, so I guess he's just not here. Uh, I want to thank a few people before I get to my remarks. I want to thank um, the Lawrence Police Department who is here tonight, all the Lawrence Police guys who are here, thank you. <laughs> Putting your lives on the line every single day in a city like Lawrence is not easy. And the Lawrence firefighters, you know, firefighters have a pretty dangerous job too. And especially Mike Delaney who has helped me coordinate some of this stuff today. Now, you'll be surprised to hear me say I want to congratulate also and thank Kelly Birchall for being in the room. <laughs> Who would have thought? But she's doing a great job to help our veterans, and so even though there's been times that we didn't get along, I truly respect the work that she does for our veterans here at the local level, Kelly. Chief Ryder from the city of Boxford, the town of Boxford, are you here, Chief? They, I, don't know what, what, I don't know what Boxford's gonna do if there's a cow stuck in the middle of the road tonight because the chief is here. They're gonna have to call a 911 to get him up there. I also wanna thank my mom. 
Uh, Auntie Dottie and Uncle Frankie raised me from the time I was about nine years old. They're here tonight. And if you guys think I give you guys on a regular basis, try being the couple that raised me through my teen years. You guys got it lucky. You got it easy. And I also want to thank uh, uh, Arthur and Loretta Gonzalez. When I was a kid, my dad got married a second time. We good? My dad got married a second time, and his second wife was, well, let's just say a little abusive. And um, the Gonzalez's lived across the street, and on multiple occasions, kicked in our door and peeled my stepmother off of me while she was beating me and picked me up and put her over her shoulder and brought me back to her house and fed me and took care of me until the situation could be rectified so I could move in with my aunt and uncle. And I, I want to think, I'll never forget for the rest of my life that when I was nine years old, there was only two people in the world that could have saved me, and they did. And thank you, Arthur and Loretta, for being here. <laughs> Joe Bevilacqua, where are you? Put your hand up, Joe Bevilacqua. Where is he? I know he's here. Thank you, Joe, for being here from the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce. Because you're here, I'm actually going to join the chamber. How about that? I want to thank Marcos Devers for being here. He is my friend. And that means a lot to me. Thank you, Marcos. And I say it like that, he's my friend, because I find myself defending him a lot. He's running for re-election. And I find myself defending him a lot. And when people start bad-mouthing Marcos to me, my answer is, that's my friend, and I don't want to hear it. Thank you for being here, Marcos. Hey, police officer, Guy Koopa. Where are you, Guy Koopa? Guy Koopa's here, but he's only here because he thought they were, they were taping Ted 5. That's kind of an inside joke. He was actually in Ted 2, the movie. And he's actually been in a couple of Adam Sandler movies, but he's a Halo police officer. We appreciate him being here. He gave us some money for our scholarships. Now, if I didn't mention you by name, it doesn't mean that I don't care. Frank Sorrell. It doesn't mean I don't care about you if I didn't mention your name, all right? All it means is that there were certain people that I really wanted to make sure that I highlighted because a lot of times they don't get the thanks or the recognition that they deserve. And one of the things that the Valley Patriots always been about is finding people who are underappreciated and trying to show them some appreciation. So thank you very much for all of that. You know, this is my favorite part of the night. There you go. That's the way I like it. This is my favorite part of, my favorite day of any year is the night of my bash. And my favorite part of the bash is when I get to stand up here to give my little, my little keynote speech and look around the room at how many people here hate my friggin' guts but are still here. You know what I'm talking about, Debo Brown, right? Debo Brown's in the house. Who would have ever thought you'd see that? The guy trashes me on Facebook every day. In fact, I think he did it this morning, although I didn't look, I didn't have the heart to look. But the reason I bring that up is because there are a lot of people in this room who love what we do and support what we do, and I thank you for that. But I'm also a lot more humbled and a lot more grateful that there's a lot of you out here, and I'm looking at some of you now, who after tonight won't even say hi to me at Dunkin' Donuts tomorrow because we just don't get along. We have different political views, we have different personal views, we have different views on life. Sometimes we're in different political camps, and sometimes we just don't like each other, right? But here's why I bring that up. Because you guys have been able to put aside your ego, and the petty personal politics, and the petty personal uh, uh, grievances that you have with me, to come into this room tonight, to write a check for these deserving kids who need scholarship money to go to college, to help us cheer on police officers, firefighters, and veterans for the heroic work that they do. And the reason I want the kid, one of the uh, scholarship kids to stay is I've got a few words for you guys. <laughs> to the students who are here getting ready to go to college, I want to tell you this. Remember tonight, please. Remember before you went to college, you stood in a room with a bunch of people who didn't know you, who have no idea about your background or your struggle, but they knew that you needed something, and they came together to give it to you, 
regardless of your race, your sexual orientation, your age, your political views, not one person called me and said, I want to give your money to a scholarship, but what are the kids' political views? Or what is the kid's sexual preference? Or what's the kid's skin color tone? Not one person in the $32,500 we've raised for tonight's scholarships, not one person asked me to do that. And that's because the national media narrative is bull <laughs> The only people who separate us by race are college professors who hate America, broadcasters on CNN and the mainstream media, because they make more money when we're fighting amongst ourselves. This bash is a testament every single year as a rebuke of what the national media and the politicians at the national level tell us America is all about. What we're really all about is helping our community. Picking up the phone and calling someone like Pavel Payano, who's a city councilor in Lawrence, and saying, I'd like to help someone. And then having Pavel find someone with the resources or find someone that needs the help and putting them together because he's an elected official. Or Marcos, or I'm just using you as an example because I know you do a lot for the homeless and I appreciate that. To the students who are here tonight, I want you to remember that the heroes in this country are not sports figures, they're not rap stars, they're not Hollywood movie actors, they're not the people you see on TV, and they're certainly not the people who rally in the streets for whatever cause they think is important at the day. The real heroes in this country are at the local level. They're your police officers, your EMTs, your firefighters, and your everyday community activists who make personal sacrifices to help other people. So in that vein, Every year we give out a community service award. Tonight we're going to give out three. And we've named our community service award for a guy named Scott Clegg. Did anybody know Scott Clegg? Put your hands together if you knew Scott. Scott was one of my best friends, man. I love that guy. He never, he never stopped laughing. Like literally, he never stopped laughing. He found everything funny. And it was a lot of fun to be around him because especially when things were going bad, He'd start laughing and he'd make you laugh and then things didn't seem so horrible. And we miss him a lot. Annie Clegg, are you here? Thank you, Annie. Where was Annie? Annie Clegg? She's probably in the bathroom. No. Call her up. If anybody sees Annie, have her, have her come up because I'm gonna give her, we have an award for her. For, or not for her, but she's gonna present it. You know, Scott Clegg was one of those people that never ran for office, never wanted to be in the newspaper, never wanted to be on television, never wanted to be a movie star, never wanted to be a singer, never wanted any recognition. But you know, about 25 years ago, when my grandfather had a stroke, I moved in to take care of him. And I was on the phone with, with Scott one day, and I said, you know, I wish I knew a carpenter, because grandpa had a stroke, and now he's in a wheelchair, and he can't get from the living room to the bathroom, because the doors aren't wide enough. And about two weeks later, I wake up at some ungodly hour, like 10 a.m. And I hear this banging and this banging, and I'm like, I'm gonna kill whoever that is. And I go outside, and there's Scott Clegg building a wheelchair ramp and widening the doorways for my grandfather's front porch. And I thought, wow. Like, I love this guy to death to begin with, but I didn't even ask him to do this. I just happened to mention one day that I had this problem he went out and got the lumber, he went out and got the tools, and he showed up and he just did it. And he didn't do it for recognition, and he didn't do it to get paid, he wouldn't let us pay him. He just did it because he wanted to help. So tonight we've got three awards for people who exemplify just that. Can we have Cole Welch? Is Cole Welch here? I didn't hear Jill Stackle, but you can almost hear her, right? All right, can somebody go get Cole Welch? Is Linda Susie here? I see Linda Susie. Even without my glasses, I can see Linda's here. Come on up, Linda and Annie. I see Annie Clegg's in the room. Come on up, Annie. You, you just missed the whole thing, but we'll do it again just for you. Phil Leahy and anybody from MVP ASAP. I, I see Linda's, Linda Susie. You're not moving. We want you up here. 
Joe Solomon, can you please go physically make her come up here, please? By the way, Joe Solomon's here, former Bethune police chief. Give him a round of applause. In fact, God damn it, give him a standing ovation with this guy's been through the last year. No standing ovation for Joe? Wow. It's kind of a slap in the face. I haven't seen anybody take a beating like that since Sid Harris ran for city council. Thank you for coming, Joe. Joe gave us over $1,500 tonight for this award, uh, for, this, for this event. And for that alone, I think he deserves a round of applause. And he's my friend. And he's my friend. Which is why you won't see the Methuen mayor here tonight. All right, so Linda Susie's here. Come on up, we want you in the middle. We want, uh, come on, Phil Leahy, we want you here. And where's Cole? I saw the hair. She's here. Brenda, can you give, did you give her the, um... <laughs> Methuen's own Linda Susie has become an icon in her neighborhood on Kirk Street in Methuen. Linda's fame came as a change agent in the early 1990s when the Arlington neighborhood in Methuen and in Lawrence, by the way, because the Arlington neighborhood kind of crosses both communities. And, it's a, and it's, a, it's a tough neighborhood to live in. She lives on Kirk Street, which is the toughest street in the Arlington neighborhood. And her driving force was to create a safe environment and programs for the kids who happen to live in that very dangerous neighborhood. Joe Solomon, why don't you come up? I don't care. They didn't give you a standing ovation, but come up anyway. Yeah. Because you're my friend. And I don't give a who knows it either. Forgive my potty mouth, I've had a couple of drinks, so. If you want me to swear more, you can buy me a Captain and Coke. Thank you, Joe, for coming. We love you, Joe. I don't care what the Tribune says about you, and I don't care what the politicians say about you. You are a good man. And most people don't know it, but Joe Solomon also, you think, he, you think he's getting the award, right? Most people don't know this, but every Wednesday when TMF goes out to feed the homeless, at least every other week Joe shows up with his truck with a bunch of sterno cans and water and food and blankets and sweaters and socks and hats for the homeless. And he doesn't want to be thanked, but we thank him anyway because I think people need to know what a good guy this guy is. And underwear, right, yeah. TMF kids love you. There's a future there for you, Joe. But back to Linda Susie, you know, she's, she's gone out and she's confronted drug dealers and I actually saw it one night myself when I was driving around chasing police calls live on Facebook. And I see this woman yelling at the top of her lungs and I thought I was gonna have to jump out of my car to save the people in the car she was yelling at until I realized it was Linda Susie screaming at drug dealers to get the hell out of her neighborhood. And then I was afraid of her. Because if drug dealers are afraid of Linda Susie, the rest of us really should be. Linda single-handedly held, held government officials at the local level in Methuen accountable and motivated the residents of that neighborhood to stand together in the worst crime riddled neighborhood in the Merrimack Valley to fight against crime. The Arlington neighborhood certainly would not be as safe as it is today or as redeveloped as it is today if not for the work of someone like Linda Susie. Today, you can walk down the streets of the Arlington neighborhood feeling safe and secure, or at least as safe and secure as you can in America today. Because Linda was the driving force behind creating the Methuen Arlington Neighborhood Association called Man Inc. The association she helped create has been a lifeline in that neighborhood, and the kids who live there, and, and the kids who live there. Man Inc. has morphed into a homework center. They help kids with sports, they help kids with family problems, they help kids with psychological problems. And anything that a kid needs that comes to Man Inc. in the Methuen Mount Arlington neighborhood, Linda and her crew are there to help them in probably one of the toughest neighborhoods in the area. For these and many, many reasons, we'll let Linda do the, uh, Brenda do this. We want to present you with our very first Ann Clegg Community Service Award for the night. I just got the look of death, and she is not happy. So let's give her a long applause, maybe she'll feel better and won't beat me up.
Thank you. I'm, I, I'm, thank you very much. Do you, do you want to say something? Can I, I go sit down now? You can. Do you want to say something first? No? If you, if you want. Of course you can. Just so you know, it's all about community and everybody working together. No one person can do anything. It, need, it takes everybody. And Joe Solomon was there at the beginning. Our mayors were there at the beginning and are still there. And it just takes everybody working as a community, and that's what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd have wanted to call out former Methuen Mayor Steve Zani, who is here tonight. Thank you, Steve, for coming. We love you, even though you're not the mayor anymore. Yes. Oh, thank you. You're all set. Yes, you, you are dismissed. Thank you. All right, so now we've got a couple of things that are very special. Where is Carrie Clark Wyland from House of Mercy and Lawrence? Carrie Wyland is here. Where did you see how amazing she looks tonight? Where's Carrie Wyland? All right, we need you up here in the middle and we need Mama G. Nancy, we need you to come up here. You're gonna help us present this award for Carrie. I got another free drink because he wants me to swear more. Thank you, Carrie. Now, many of you have, hello? Many of you have, see I grew up in a, in a, in a I grew up in, a, in a, um, a generation where like we just didn't talk through this kind of stuff, so I'm just not used to it. Um, many of you have followed me on Facebook when I go live and I'm chasing police calls and there's shootings and fires and accidents and stuff going on. And through the process of doing that, I got to meet a really special person over all you guys up at the bar. With this little program going on up there, I don't know if you noticed that. Carrie Wyland works at House of Mercy. She also helps with Isaiah 58 up in New Hampshire. She's also a member of the Franz Acres Association in New Hampshire. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've showed up at House of Mercy with a homeless person who needed something. And no matter how busy Carrie was with her day, she stopped what she was doing, she sat down with us, and she worked out this homeless person's problem no matter who it was. In fact, I'll give you one example. We found Louis Rosalie, we thought he was dead. He was on the, on the ground behind McDonald's on Essex Street. And I got out of my car, and we were live on Facebook while it was going on, and I got out of my car and I, I poked the guy and I poked the guy, and we thought he was dead, but I felt for a pulse and he was alive. And then he woke up, and he said he'd been walking through the city and he was so tired he just needed to lay down and sleep. And I said, dude, there's a homeless shelter like two blocks away. But he didn't know that because he wasn't from Lawrence. So I put him in my car, I brought him to Daybreak, and the next day Carrie called me and said, you know, he came over to House of Mercy after he left Daybreak, this guy's gonna need some help, let's sit down and figure out a way to help him. She put him in a car and got him twice, three times? Three times we put him in rehab, three times he failed. And we'd find him out on the street and I'd say, Lewis, what are you doing out here? And he'd say, oh, I, 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 I effed up. And I said, yeah, you did, but you know what? We still want to help you. Go see Carrie again. She will get you into rehab. Stay in rehab. And the other day, maybe three or four weeks ago, maybe, because my times are always off, I'm walking down Broadway, and there's Louis Rosalie. He drives by in a 2022 pickup truck, and he's beeping, and he's waving, and Mr. Dugan, Mr. Dugan. I'm like, this guy's doing better than I am now, thanks to people like Carrie Wildwind. Is Annie Clegg still here? Did she leave? Oh. Annie Clegg? Yeah, come on up. This is your award, hon. So I, I without, without, any, without any more delays or anything else, you know, I want to wrap up by saying, I have met a lot of good people on the streets of Lawrence who go out of their way to help people who can never pay them back. I've met a lot of good people who help people every single day and make personal sacrifices because of it. They take money out of their pocket to help people, they make phone calls and burn political favors to help some of these people, and I can't think of anybody that I would rather give a Scott Clegg Community Service Award to than my good friend, Carrie Clark Wyland.
I love it when the award when the award recipients want to say a few words. So Carrie was, can you can you believe how great she looks? Can you believe this? Thank you, everyone. I just want to say I am very humbled to receive this. Can everybody hear me? I don't know if everyone can hear me, but there's something really important that I want to say about this. A um, couple things. I won't steal the show. I might. Um, I feel like I don't really deserve this award because I feel like everyone should do their part in the community if they have the ability to. Everyone should care. And I want everyone to know that they can do important things. Um, but there are two people in particular that these couple past years we've been putting people in the back of vans and getting them into hotel rooms and bringing food and bringing clothes. And I feel like if you don't have a team and people helping you, yeah, can everyone listen? If you don't have people behind you, you can't succeed. And really, I'm good at bringing people together. That's what I'm good at. And Tom, you and I do that. But I do want to, they're going to kill me, right? I have to ask that Sharon Cora Booker and Kelly Virtual Frazier also get their butts up here. Because if you guys could see the comedy of errors of the things that we do, calls in the middle of the night, figuring out detox, and you know, running around pairs of sneakers, bringing food all over the planet, and putting people in the back of vans, transporting to make things happen. You can't do it alone. And these girls right here, Kelly, get your butt up here. guys, as well as many others, by the way, but these guys are the dream team. Um, honestly, we've made so much happen together, and I really have to say, if I'm getting an award, these guys need the recognition, too. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, John. Thank you. All right, so now, I was so damn sneaky with this next one, <laughs> because the next person who's getting an award is actually part of my bash committee. And so they got to see like all the awards when they came out and the, and, the, and the program book. If you look, I had to take her name out of the program book because she'd see it and then she'd kill me. Uh, can we have Mike uh, Gorman come up? Where's Mike Gorman? I love you, Mike. I'm going to give this to you. Where's your mom? Mom, why don't you come up to her? And Darlene Ford, this is the time when you're supposed to be in the back. You're grabbing your extra thing that you're doing. So, um, where's Nancy Gorman? So, I, you know, here's the thing. TMF goes out every Wednesday night. They feed the homeless on 2 South Broadway. They're going to be going back to the bus station shortly. And that's, that's a pretty great thing. Here's what most people don't know. What most people don't know is at the end of the night when TMF is done feeding the homeless, Michael's mom, Nancy Gorman, gets in her car with all the leftover food and drives to all of the homeless encampments for the people who couldn't make it to TMF that night and brings them a warm meal and blankets and sternos and sweaters. Between the two of them, Mike Gorman and his mom, Nancy, I have learned so much about what it means to have self-sacrifice to help other people. And I absolutely could not let tonight happen without presenting a Scott Clegg Community Service Award to the woman that we call Mama G, Nancy Gorman. say a few words other than I'm killing. She hugged me and said, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> now, look, when we do this bash every year, we do a lot of great stuff, and sometimes, it, what's, what's that, Lori? Oh, okay, we'll do a picture in a second. Um, you know, we do, this, we do this bash every year, and it's a lot to process. Sometimes when it's over, you gotta think, we have eight scholarships, seven awards, we have comedians, and sometimes you have to think about it, but you know, if not for the people on my bash committee, 
one of which is Nancy Gorman, who did a lot of work tonight, Maria, Fiato, and, and, and everyone on the BASH committee who puts this together, it's a tremendous undertaking. It's tremendous. To raise $32,000 for scholarships in a five-week period, it's unbelievable. And when we do something like this, we also want to make sure that the people behind the scenes who make it happen also get recognized. Come on up, Jackie, we love you. Come here, Jackie. If not for Jackie, we wouldn't be going back to the bus stop, Jackie Marmo. So if anybody else has anything more to say before we move on to our next award, well, Mike wants to say a few words to congratulate his mom. Yeah, so um, mom, con congratulations. Uh, truly, you know, I, I think back to the younger days, you know, and my mom used to always have the, this quote on the fridge and it stuck with me throughout life. Um, that quote was, you know, people might forget what you said and forget what you did, but you know, people will never forget how you made them feel. Right, and, and her big belief was, you know, treat people with kindness, you know, um, let, let them know you care. And I kind of just kept that with me uh, throughout life. And the other, the second thing was, you know, always acknowledge people who help you throughout the journey. And so like, I never forget to like, you know, say thank you. You know, so many people even in this building have really like taken a moment to, you know, talk and, and guide me and guide TMF. And, you know, I'm so thankful for, for Tom. You know, Tom, TMF met him at the bus station when he pulled in with his Jeep. And he's been with us every single Wednesday night, you know, ha has put us in the paper, um, has told so many folks out there, you know, this group is really about and, and they believe. But um, thank you to everybody out there for believing in us. Um, all the city councilors um, in Lawrence for helping us get that bus station back. <laughs> Beyond excited, uh, Mayor Brian DePena, thank you uh, for believing in us. Uh, Pavel, you know, all, the, all those sit-down talks and those phone calls and just saying hang in there, you know, and just guiding me when I knew nothing about politics, you know, and, and just those little life lessons. So thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Don't go anywhere. See, so you think we're done, right? No, no, no. The one thing you're going to learn about me is I always go one more step no matter how many steps we've taken. Uh, Michael, we've got a little surprise for you. Um, do you remember when I called you on the phone about six months ago and I said, you really need to get your 501c3? And you said, yeah, it's a lot of paperwork. I said, get the 501c3. Well, I don't know how to do it. Get the 501c3. Well, he called me a month ago and he said, we got our 501c3. We're officially a nonprofit now. And because you've got your nonprofit, Darlene Ford from AAA Merrimack Valley has something special for you. Hi, Michael. <laughs> Is this on? Uh, hold it close. Okay. Uh, I don't usually need a microphone, but uh, so about a year ago, or a little bit less than a year ago, I started uh, following Michael. Oh, sorry. I started following Michael on social media and. Um, was amazed at the work that Michael did and had spoken to Tom about him and said, hey, this kid needs to go get his 501c3 so I can help him and get him some money from AAA. Um, AAA's value statement is to um, help and serve as a way of life, um, much like Michael's, helping and serving as a way of life. Um, and we wanted to help him on his journey. So um, Tom and I kind of plotted, and I worked with um, him through the 501c3. And when he called me, I worked with your friend um, Frank Can behind your back. Um, and we got all the necessary paperwork together, and we put a proposal together and submitted that to the AAA Charitable Giving Committee. And um, I would like very much, and could you open this check for me? to present a family with a check for $2,500 to help you on Yeah, Alex, come on the side of the room. 
Get mad to pay you. Get yeah. mad to pay you with us. Ryan! Come on, man. Get up here, man. Come on. Ryan! Come on, man. Come on, Come on, man. Come on, So I just want to say one more thing, Michael, while you have your... Michael, I just want to say one more thing to you and your team, to all of you. I want you to know that AAA is so proud of all of you for the work that you do for your community. And I want you to know that we back your movement and we'll continue to help you as much as we can. Boy, that's a motley crew, isn't it? Rich, make sure you get a picture of Darlene from AAA with Michael, so we can get it in the paper. We want to thank AAA as much as we can. Mama G's gonna be mad at me. Look at that. We're on page 33. Thank you to everybody who's sending drinks up to the front. Kelly, you want me to swear a lot more? That'll be coming in the next section of the program. After the children leave? Now we go, Brian, stay here. Before we go any further. There he is. All right, settle down now. We got this little program up here. We were trying to get through so we can all get to the after party. Who's coming to the after party? That's where the real fun starts. This is the preamble. Uh oh, mom's coming. I guess I can't drink. Hey guys, how many people were here at the last bash four years ago? Can you please raise your hand? Let me see. Jeff Deal, I know Jeff Deal was here. Thank you. Joe Solomon was here. I don't know if you guys remember. Shh. I don't know if you guys remember, but four years ago, I looked out for the 18th year in a row, and I saw Brian DePina sitting at that table with Anna Levy and Pavel Payano and Estella Reyes and Octavian Spano. Where is Octavian? No, he's not feeling good, okay. We'll let him off the hook, he's gonna have to buy me drinks later. And I looked out into the, I looked out into the audience and I saw Brian DePina and it was just like a random thought. Like, in the room, random thought, I looked at him and I said, you know what? Brian DePena's here, and wouldn't he make a great mayor? Please run for mayor, Brian. Please, I will back you and you will win. He did! He ran and he won! And he came over to me on election day, and I said to him, do you still think you can win this? Because I was still a little skeptical. And he said, Tommy, Tommy. We're going to win, and we're going to win because of your people at the bash making all the phone calls trying to help us. So thank all of you in the room who helped Brian DePena after that night because I said at this microphone that if he ran, he would, he would win and we would help him. And you did, and he's the mayor now. Thank you. We're gonna have you speak in about 10 minutes. 10 minutes while you speak. Now I feel bad because I took over some of Jane's duties. And she just looks so beautiful tonight. There's nothing that I like more than having her up here on stage. Because the pictures come out so good. Do you want to do this or you want me to do it? We're on page 33. Do you want to? All right. 
you know, a few people tonight, you hand them the microphone, they don't want to talk. For any of you in the room who don't know me, I just love the microphone. So yes, Tom, I'll do this part. So we need to know the 50-50 total, first of all. Do we know that? Do we know that? Denise. Because you should be buying these tickets. Who's selling 50-50? Someone better be selling 50-50. Oh, right there. Oh. Aren't they going around? Do we know what the total is? Stephanie, are you doing 50-50? Yeah. Do we know, do we have a total? Oh, I don't know. It's a million dollars. All right. Someone please do a total for the 50-50. While we're doing that, we'll have a little bit of fun. I've been sitting next to Eric Spignoli all night. I hear he's very, very funny, or so he tells me. So we are going to give it up for a superstar. You guys are going to have to be quiet if you want to hear his jokes. And the soon-to-be-retiring comedian, Eric Spignoli. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Let's give it up for the Bash Committee for putting this whole thing together, huh? Now, for those of you who don't know, I used to write for the Valley Patriot. And uh, I started writing for the paper in my senior year of college because I thought it would look good on a resume. Um, you know what doesn't look good on a resume is a link to Tom Duggan's Facebook page. <laughs> Because every job interview I had, I would get the same two questions. What is the Valley Patriot and where were you on January 6th? Oh. I'm just trying to get out of here before he starts cutting eye holes in his pillowcase, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was around this time, a few years ago, that uh, my father had a heart attack. And uh, when I went to see him in the hospital, he was sound asleep. When he woke up, he was kind of out of it, he was kind of stirring a little bit, and he said, oh, am I in heaven? And I said, no, Dad, it's, it's your son, I'm here for you. And he said, oh, sh I'm in hell. <laughs> I'm just kidding, people, I love my dad. We even gave each other nicknames. Yeah, I call him Chief, and he calls me a disappointment. <laughs> but there is one thing my dad and I can agree on, and it's this. The root of just about every problem in this country is overpopulation, and I think it's time we start doing something to solve it. Now calm down, because I'm not talking about genocide or mass extinction, but maybe we take the do not eat labels off of laundry detergent and let natural selection help us out a little bit, you know? Because if you're out there seriously thinking of eating Tide Pods, do we really need your DNA in the gene pool? No. Do we really need you breeding with someone just as dumb as you? And then you spit out five dumbass kids who then produce their own dumbass kids who then grow up to be clogging the middle lane on I-95 because they got to get to the Kenny Chesney concert an hour early so they can huff a gassy rag in the parking lot. Do we really need that? It's just, people who shouldn't have kids keep having kids. Take my family, for example. Dude, by the time my parents pass away, my only inheritance will be alcoholism. So, uh, I was watching Channel 7 a couple years ago, and uh, I saw a story about this couple from Boston who got married in a Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, I'm gonna repeat that. They got married in a Dunkin' Donuts. Where was the honeymoon of Taco Bell? That has got to be the most Boston thing I've ever seen in my life. But you know what? I wanna hear the wedding vows from the wedding at Dunkin' Donuts. You know, just some guy in a Bruins jersey with a shamrock tattoo in this general area. I, <laughs> well, Darlene, here we are in the place we first met. I remember, it was March 24th, it was a Saturday, and it was the day after Marky's killer house party. You know the one where Sean got stabbed after yelling slurs all night? Yeah, that one. 
Anyway, I saw you drinking your coffee, and I said, wow, she looks wicked hot. And the tattoo on your lower back was just peeking out enough that I could make out the letters, which read, insert here. I took you on a date to Fenway Park, and we watched the Sox beat the Rangers. But of course, then we got tossed in the seventh inning because I punched that guy behind us who said the town was an overrated movie. You could have ran, you could have stopped me, but you didn't. You threw your beer all over his wife, and we caught him the salt charge together. The day we got out of prison in Walpole, I knew I had to marry you. And I'll have a bacon, egg, and cheese on a bagel toasted into gum. <laughs> uh, let's hear it for the first responders in the audience tonight, huh? I love cops, I love firefighters, I have both of my family. Uh, my uncle Mike is a fireman, and my uncle Jim is a cop. And a few months ago on Christmas, they were talking smack to each other. So my uncle Mike goes, hey Jimbo, I put out a five alarm fire last week. What did you do? My uncle Jim said, what did I do? I started tracking down the guy who started the fire. And let me tell you, when I find this son of a I'm gonna bury him underneath the prison. How about you, Eric? What did you do last week? I said, well, I started the fire. <laughs> and it kind of got out of hand. <laughs> Instead, I'll leave the uh, scholarship recipients with an inspirational quote that hopefully you can use in a paper someday. College is gonna be the best time of your life. So when you get there, work hard, have fun, and use protection because chlamydia is a real pain in the ass, believe me. I'm Eric Spagnoli, thank you guys for coming out. Be safe and enjoy your night. All right, we were looking for a 50-50 number. Let me tell you something, you should be buying this 50-50 tonight. We're already at $1,114. That means you get half, so you get like, with my Lawrence High math, let me count on my fingers, at least like 60 something dollars. So buy your tickets. So what would the Valley Patriot Bash be without a roast? And who better to roast Tom Duggan than his Facebook arch enemy, who we mentioned before, who I see at the bar, I think, Debo Brown. Hey, Jeff Deal, my mom's looking for you. Jeff Deal, if you're in the house, my mom's looking for you. First and foremost, I'd like to take a second to thank each and every one of you for coming out to the 18th annual Valley Patriot Bash. Give yourselves a round of applause tonight. Today's a very important, monumental night because this bash is actually the same age as the last girl who saved Tom as free food in her cell phone. I gotta be honest though, Tom. This haircut's giving me Richard vibes. If I didn't know your name was Tom, I would think it was Richard. Richard, who's Richard? It's because of the head, sir. As you know, me and Tom have not always seen eye to eye. But today was, was, was an invitation well received because as he stated earlier in the bash, we don't have to agree on every topic to realize how important a night like tonight is. Before I get into the nitty gritty of it, I will remind you though, Tom, that I am not Chris Rock. <laughs> so there will be no Will Smith God damn it. smacks tonight. That's the whole reason I asked you here. 
Tom is really an intriguing character. Tom is the only now guy I know who got a permit to carry and then pays security to shoot his gun for him. <laughs> he does, yes, he does. This is not up for debate. He did it on Facebook Live, and I swear to God, the security guard looked like Cheddar Bob from Eighth Mile. Tom, I would like to introduce you to my friend, my security guard, House. Stand up, House, so he can see what a security guard looks like. This is what a real security guard looks like. And he is available for hire, Tom, just in case. It gets too gritty at the homeless dinner and we need to enact the pow pow life. I gotta be honest though, I mean, you guys, you guys are hot, this is a tough crowd tonight. I can't believe you didn't give my man Joe Solomon a standing ovation. Joe Solomon, we love you. You have to Come give on, this guy a standing ovation. And let me tell you why before you do. Hold on, one second. I'm already out. Had it not been for Chief Joe Solomon, all of your scholarships would have been like $1,000. But we recalculated it using the Gallant math system, and now you get like $4,000. So give us a standing ovation for Chief Joe Solomon, please, and thank you. My friend! Tom, yes, honestly, I had a whole litany of things to say. And I was going to say them. I was hoping you would. I, I, I really was. But honestly, man, I, I can't even knock this. I can't make a joke out of the fact that we have some amazing first responders here in the city, and we are truly blessed to have them here with us tonight. And halfway, uh, and halfway through the night, everybody's still here. Well, that's because they knew I was coming up. They didn't say for you, Tom, because again, the haircut gives them the Richard vibes. So, honestly though, Tom, I will say, I remember the first time I was invited to the worldwide headquarters of the Valley Patriot. I don't know about you guys if you've ever been there, but I thought this place was as big as Tom's ego. Well, let me tell you, it's not. I walk into the, well, I pull up to this place, right? It's a three-story apartment building. Okay, whatever. I call Tom, am I in the right place? Because I'm, I'm fighting with a guy for parking in front of Heavenly Donuts, and he looks serious, like if I don't give him his spot, we might fight. So he says, no, you're in the right spot, come upstairs. Didn't think nothing of it. I go, I knock on the door, and of course the secretary, he does have a secretary, believe it or not, opens the door for me. I walk in, and I couldn't tell if I was in the living room, a back room, or a half of a pantry. But what I could tell is that Tom's desk was so big that Tom was in the pantry and I was in the living room. But that also taught me something very special, right? And all jokes aside, this goes specifically to the scholarship recipients. It taught me that no matter how big your dream is in your head and how small it may be to other people, if you continue to manifest that dream, there is no limit to the things that you can accomplish. Tom is a perfect example of that. I know 90% of you counted him out. And he's here. His 18th edition of this batch. And it shows that even when people didn't believe in his dream, Tom still did. As much as some of us may have not agreed with how he went about it, Tom had a vision, and most importantly, the ability to execute it. So to the recipients of the 2022 scholarship awards, I, I say to you this. 
Never allow anyone to place their limitations on you. Just because they couldn't doesn't mean you can. I repeat, just because they couldn't do it doesn't mean that you can't. So Tom wanted me to get vicious. He wanted me to go for the jugular. And I'm just, these jokes really wrote themselves. These jokes really wrote themselves. I know a lot of people were worried about the hoarding in the stores and the panic buying, right? How many people were unable to buy a roll of toilet paper last year? Show of hands, how many people were unable to buy? Okay, so we got one. You were the one person in the crowd, really? That's what you guys want me to believe? Well, I believe it though, Tom. You know why I believe it? Because that was the one guy who doesn't know where all the bins for the Valley Patriot newspaper are. The rest of us knew where they were, and we weren't worried about toilet paper because we had something to keep us tidy. <laughs> oh, man. I couldn't believe how much Tom really taught me, though, about myself. And I mean that with all sincerity. Because we know that Tom is the guru in breaking news. So he made sure to tell you in 2008 how I was arrested in 2003. And it was breaking news and all of you guys believed it. So give yourselves a round of applause because you keep this going every year. Now, with that being said, one thing I want everybody in this room to know is this. We all make mistakes. We have all been there. We have all questioned our actions. But how you fall is not how you determine to get back up. Everyone is ready to catch you slipping, out of pocket, out of character but no one is willing to acknowledge the hard work and dedication it takes to pick yourself back up. So remember that. Again, to the college, uh, to, excuse me, to the scholarship recipients, it's okay to fall on your face. It's okay to not have all the right answers. I'm 40 years old and I'm just starting to figure this out now. So go out into the world with an open mind as a sponge and be ready to collect everything except for what you see in the Valley Patriot. <laughs> if you can hold on to that one key core value, then you will have half a brain and be able to make half an equation in school and hopefully these scholarships will pay off. To Tom, I wish you nothing but the best going forward, my brother. I really do, from the bottom of my heart. Um, and to the rest of the heroes here in the room, I call you heroes. And those people I am mentioning are our first responders, like Officer Cano, who puts his badge on every day to proudly serve the citizens of Lawrence. I salute you, sir. And this one you have to give a standing ovation to. Where's Carl Farrington? Carl Farrington's over here. Carl Farrington is over here. I'm gonna go over here, hold on. Because believe it or not, me and Carl Farrington have had more differences than Tom, uh, Richard, me and Richard have ever had. But to you, Officer Farrington, it is truly a pleasure to see you standing here on your own two feet, sir. Give him a standing round of applause. And I will close out how I met Officer Carl Farrington, because this is probably the funniest. Ever. So, 18 years old, 
I was working for DYS. I know, I'm laughing myself. They actually gave me the f job. But I was working for DYS, right? I'm walking home one day, and I forget to take the cuffs out of my back pocket. I'm just walking up the street, minding my own business, 19-year-old kid, walking literally past the courthouse. And here comes Carl, who couldn't catch a cold at the time, by the way but manages to catch me walking up the street with a pair of cuffs. You would have thought I stole a copy of the Valley Patriot out of one of the free bins, and here he was, ready to respond, full of gusto. So Officer Car uh, Farrington pulls me over, and I still don't even know what the hell he's talking about because I forgot that the cuffs were in the back of my pants. So he goes, why do you have a pair of cuffs? And I said, I don't. I swear to God, I don't. He's like, really stupid? <laughs> what are these? What are you, David Blaine? It's <laughs> like, gosh, no, I'm just a dumbass with a poor memory. So, long story short, 25 cops later, they realized that I do, in fact, work for DYS at the time. Officer Farrington apologizes, and we carry on. Fast forward 20 years, I'm sitting in my office, and a guy that I once had hatred for in my heart, truly had hatred for him because of the level of embarrassment that he put me through, I get a breaking news story on Springfield Street. One of our officers has been pinned between a vehicle. And at the time, I didn't know the name of the officer. I just knew that it was one of our officers that was trapped. I later come to find out that it was Officer Carl Farrington. And just like that, my hatred turned to worry, to concern. Because I, I, I right then and there realized that Officer Farrington was looking out for the best interests of the community, even though he really thought he had somebody running around with a spare pair of cuffs. He was doing the right thing and serving his community. And to see the images of him laying there, Carl, it broke my heart, brother. It really did. I was scared for a second, for not only for you, but your family, your department, your brothers. And most importantly, the people in the street that really respected you for everything that you do every day when you put that badge on, my brother. So Carl, tonight, I want you to truly understand that I came here to roast and crack jokes, but my love and appreciation for everything you did for this city and this department is no laughing matter. One more round of applause for Officer Paul Farrington, who is here tonight on his own two feet, thanks to the grace of God. Are you having fun? And to the rest of the men of the Lawrence Police Department, as well as the Lawrence Fire Department, and all of the other first responders, Go away tonight knowing that even though we may not agree on every point, on every aspect, that one street law always reigns true, and that is that rec real recognize real. So with that being said, my hat's off to not only the first responders in the room, but everybody who came out tonight to be a part of this amazing event to honor everybody in this room. Round of applause for all of you guys. And I leave you with this, Tom. I thank you very much for this invitation. I'm sorry I couldn't be as vicious as you would have liked me to be, but in light of everybody in this room, Carl Farrington, Officer Cano, Counselor De, uh, Del, Del Rosario, 
Councilor Stephanie Infante, Mayor Brian DePena, Estella Reyes, Estella Reyes, a Councilor and State Representative to be Estella Reyes as well, as well as Pavel Payano. This was something that I was truly honored to be able to attend. So for that, I thank you, Richard, AKA Tom Duggan of the Valley Patriot. And that's from a guy that hates me. That's pretty good. Where are we? I'm afraid to ask. All right, Octavian Spanner is a very good friend of mine. And I've known him for about 30 years. I'm very sad that he's not here, but I guess he's not feeling well. But can we give a round of applause for Octavian Spanner for helping TMF get back to the bus stop? He also helped us solve the Thomas Ellis little problem over on Havel Street. And whether they take the deal that we negotiated or not, Mayor Brian DePena, man, you, you gave 90% in that negotiation. Where is he? You gave 90%. We sat down to negotiate for this property, and, and he gave 90%. And the people on the other side who were, who were giving 10%, they weren't really that happy to give the 10% that they were giving. And you know what? Brian DePena gave him 95%. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. And I know that I couldn't have a Valley Patriot Bash without my good friend, Mayor DePena, to come up here and say a couple of words. Come on up, the Mayor of the City of Lawrence at the Valley Patriot Bash for the first time we've had a mayor now in four years. I don't want to say anything about the last guy, but he kind of bailed on us a few times. Thank you, my friend. I love you, too. I'm so like you, man. I really am. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Yes, it's true. Um, I remember four years ago when you, when you told me, Brian, please, hurry for city mayor. But maybe you don't understand that compromise is the job, the city mayor, the Lawrence. No. Because the city have a many challenge, you know, needs uh, somebody unif put it too many communities together. It's not easy. It's not easy. But I take the challenge. I think the city in this moment move forward because everybody stay together in this moment. The city, I understand how many challenges, but when everybody work together, something happened. I remember a couple of years ago when I city council, you remember? Hmm? You remember? Everybody team. Impossible. Impossible doing new events in the Berkeley garage. And now, it's the reality. You know, nothing is impossible when everybody works together, when everybody put it a different personality, an issue personal in this side. I want to say thank you for, for the great opportunity. I want to say thank you for both for me in November. And I move the city forward. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. When I came, when I came from New York 20 years ago, my vision in this city is not running for city mayor, not for important political. It's because my family came 50 years ago to the city and moved to the right direction when they take the decision to move to Lawrence. And now, now is that my opportunity for doing something for the community. And I do it. 
Believe me, yes or no, if you believe it to the city of Lauren, move forward, it's a time. It's city time now. Organize the city. Create opportunity for the residents. Clean the city, clean the street, clean park, renovate many street in the city. It's my challenge. I want to say thank you for being here. I want to say thank you for the opportunity. I believe it in the city. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for that opportunity for representing the city of London. Thank you, Tom. You are my friend, and that means a lot. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. It just feels so good to have a real mayor again, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Because the last mayor threw TMF out of the bus stop because he thought it made Lawrence look good, or look bad. And he didn't care about the fact that they were feeding homeless people and getting them off the street and getting them into detox and getting them into transitional housing. He didn't care. What he cared about was it was making Lawrence and making him look bad that there were so many homeless people in the city that needed those services. And then Brian got elected. And on the day he took office, he called me on the phone and he said, I want you and I want Mike Gorman in my office tomorrow morning. We're gonna start putting together a plan to let TMF go back to the Buckley Garage bus station so they can feed the homeless with an overhang so that they're not getting rained on and snowed on while they're trying to eat out in the cold. So thank you, Mayor, so much for that. Hey, Mayor, can we unencrypt that police scanner soon? The police scanner's still encrypted. Can we get that undone at some point? Has anybody seen the Lawrence police chief? Is he here? No, he's not here, right? That's kind of funny, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, um, where's Chris Doty? Chris Doty's a candidate for governor. And uh, he asked if he could say a few words about what we do here tonight. Is he still here, Chris Doty? Candidate for governor, Republican candidate. There he is. Give him a round of applause. He's running for governor and he came to my batch. At a time when I hear from some of the officials that, like, nobody wants to say anything to him back inside. I don't know where that is. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for being here. Well, it is so nice to be here with all of you. So I heard Tom say he doesn't have a lot of friends, but I don't think so, Tom. Looks like you have a lot of friends here. It, uh, as uh, we've been here listening to all of you share stories about helping your community, I have felt in my heart and my soul this sense of community and caring for each other. And that's what it's all about. And uh, I just feel honored to be here with all of you. The, um, I think we should just recognize Tom. The first time I met Tom, I looked in the eyes and I could tell right away that this is a man that cares, but not just cares, but cares intensely about people. Uh, with some energy and enthusiasm to take care of the world around him. And uh, I have that same sense here tonight, hearing the awards that were handed out of people going out at night and serving those that are most in need and um, sacrificing of their own time and their energy and resources to bless the lives of other people. And I commend you so much for your community and that sense of care for each other. Uh, that is the heart and soul of the human condition, and I'm just grateful to be here tonight with all of you. To our vets, I just want to say that on behalf of everyone here, we, we know that freedom's never free, and uh, you have, the, our vets have made the greatest sacrifice, and we honor them and recognize them. <laughs> and, and to our first responders, likewise, there have been moments in my life where I needed a first responder, and they were there, they were professionals, they knew what to do, and uh, I feel deeply grateful in my heart for those that are the first responders. Lastly, lastly, I just want to say for those that received their scholarships tonight, I don't know if they're still here with us, but when I was a young man, I received a scholarship and they said something to me I've never forgotten all these years. They said to me, where much is given, much is expected. And so I offer that same advice to those that are the this, this scholarship award winners tonight, that where much is given, much is expected. Expect much of yourselves. Um, hold yourselves accountable and make the world a better place. Thank you all so much. 
Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And thank you a lot for being here, too. I appreciate it. It's our treat. Now, I feel bad because I feel like I just made a new friend with Chris Doty. And he seemed like such a nice guy. And I was on his webpage today, and I was looking at some of his positions, and it kind of falls in line with kind of the way I think about things. But I felt very conflicted because Jeff Deal is still in the house. Is he here still? Jeff Deal? He left? Well, that's too bad. Because this is Jeff's crowd. Jeff has been here five years in a row up until COVID. And he was here earlier. He came in the back and he shook my hand. I thought he'd still be here. So what do we have left? Last call for 50-50 in raffle tickets. The 50-50 ra is at $1,299, so technically 1,300 bucks. And you get half of that, so you guys should be buying some 50-50 raffles. You're going home with at least, I don't know, my Lawrence High math, kind of my fingers, like, I don't know, 600 and something dollars anyway. I have no idea where we are in the program and I'm totally right. Yeah. Brenda says we have a bunch of pins that say proud to be an American. And I think we're making like what, a dollar or two dollars for the scholarships on each pin. So if you want to buy a pin that says proud to be American, please do that. Please put your hands together. We're gonna, we have like two more scholarships. And now that we've gotten all the speeches and stuff out of the way, we have two more scholarships and one more award to do. And then we go to the after party. Where's Jen, Jen Cooper? Is Jen Cooper still here? Jen? All right, you coming to the after party? It's not an after party without Jen Cooper. I've been told that many times. Where are we? Oh, Diane. Where is my favorite? Boy, do I take... Hey, guys. I take a lot of because I'm a conservative right-wing kind of guy, and my favorite state senator in the world is a moderate Democrat named Diana Zaglia. Where is she? How do you not love Diana DeZaglia? She might vote wrong on a lot of stuff, but if you call her office and you've got a problem, there is nobody who responds faster than Diana DeZaglia, and that's all about public service. And she's a candidate for state auditor, and she has my endorsement. I got that. <laughs> All right, everyone, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Diana. It is a good evening. Look, we're all out. We're back at the Relief Zen, in person, smiling faces, some of us. <laughs> are happy to be back out, but look, it really is great to see everybody. I'm really excited to be here with you. I've been crisscrossing the state, and it's always good to come back home and to, to speak with everybody again and to, to reconnect. I am here tonight uh, for one reason and one reason only, and that is to make sure I'm up here at the microphone for one reason only, and that is to make sure that I say a big thank you to Tom and the whole team uh, at the Valley Patriot for their work tonight, especially in scholarship. Uh, presentations, a lot of students, a lot of folks really do uh, appreciate and rely on those scholarships and wouldn't have some of the opportunities that they're not going to have without them. So I want to thank you for those scholarships and thank everybody here for helping to contribute to those scholarships by buying these tickets here tonight. So give yourselves a round of applause. And we do have a very official citation. It's a, it's a birthday card. Come on. You can come down here, Tom. <laughs> come on. It says, be it here, it's very, very formal tonight. Be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts State Senate hereby extends its congratulations to the Valley Patriot in recognition of the occasion and celebration of your 18th anniversary. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for future good fortune and continued success in all of your endeavors. Thanks so much, Tom. This is for you. Have a great night, everyone.
Thank you, Diana. You'll be soon knowing her as State Auditor Diana Desaglio, but we just around here call her Diana. Yeah, no, no unicorn song anymore, okay, though? We just asked for that. I know I've been neglecting Estella Reyes. Estella Reyes, can we give a round of applause to City Council, Lawrence and Councilor Estella Reyes? Where's she going? There she is. She came to for state rep. She's a city councilor in Lawrence. And when I picked up the phone and I called her to ask TMF, and I said, I need some help for TMF. These kids help the homeless. And many of these kids, and I'm gonna embarrass you guys for a second. Many of these kids barely have a little bit of food at home themselves. Yet every Wednesday night, they're out at 2 South Broadway in Lawrence, feeding the homeless, finding out what their needs are. If somebody shows up at TMF and says, I'm ready to go to rehab, they can put them in a car that night on the spot and get them into a, get them into a rehab and, and start them on their process of getting them off the street and not be addicted. And that's something that I truly appreciate, so let's have some round of applause for that. Did State Representative Lenny Miller make it into the room? Where's Lenny? He's here, come on up, Lenny. He's a state rep from Newberry, and he's here in Lawrence tonight to support the Valley Patriot. You having fun? I'm having a blast too, but I'm living on my mind. Where are we? Now, I've got a really quick story for you, because I know we're over program. Actually, we've done pretty good, considering how much we've crammed into this. So two weeks ago, I'm sitting in my office and the Boxford Police Chief, Jim Ryder, who's over here, raise your hand. Come on up and bring your girlfriend and bring your, bring your daughter to me. Come on up. So Jim Ryder, who's the police chief in Boxford, was in my office and we're just chatting about stuff, right? We're not real, we're just kind of hanging out. And he looks at his phone and he goes, did you just post this thing about a kid named Maxwell Bork? And I said, yeah, he's gonna be our scholarship recipient for the Dan Strange uh, Memorial Scholarship. And where's Ken DeLuca? Ken DeLuca, come on up. He, this Maxwell Bork is also gonna be the recipient of the Michelle DeLuca Benedetti Scholarship. And I said, yeah, I just posted it because while we were sitting here talking, Ken, De, Ken DeLuca and a few people texted me that this is the kid who's getting the scholarship. And he said, you're kidding me. That's my girlfriend's son. I said, get, I didn't even pick the kid. Where's Scott Wood? Is Scott Wood here? You made it? Come on up, man. I didn't see you, and I'm sorry. I would have thanked you earlier if I saw that you were here. Scott Wood is here from the Haverhill School Committee. Round of applause, please. Now, you know what? If you think about this just for a second, we've got Scott Wood from the Haverhill School Committee. We've got Lenny Merritt. He's a state rep from Newberry. We've got the mayor of Lawrence. We've got two state reps from Lawrence. We've got seven city councilors from Lawrence. We've got five city councilors from Methuen. We have Board of Selectmen from North Andover. We have Battlegrounds Coffee in the house. Give them a round of applause for helping veterans every year. I'm sorry, every day. Every day Battlegrounds is helping our veterans. This really is a cross-section. Shh. There you go. This is really a cross-section of people from all over the Merrimack Valley coming together in one night to help kids get scholarships and to help award first responders for the things that they do for us every day. And I think all of you deserve a round of applause for that. Where did Jana go? We lost Jana somewhere. Okay, all right, very good. She's coming back, Tom. All right, very good. So I'm gonna do this myself since Jane is not here. And we're gonna give this to Scott Wood. Hi, guys. Thank you for coming. Look how great she looks. I'm just happy to see you walking across the room. Come on, you've met me, right? You can't be too shocked by my comments. All right, so our next scholarship winner. Maxwell Bork is a football player for the city of Haverhill. 
And uh, let me give this to, where is Scott? I'm sorry, I should have given that to you while I was walking past you. Trying to do this again. So a few years ago, a, a girl that I knew growing up, Michelle DeLuca, passed away of cancer. And her brother, Ken, who's here, is a very good friend of mine. He's in my office all the time, he's hanging out and chatting about stuff. Because if you come to the Valley Patriot office, there's really nothing you do but chat about stuff. That's what we do, right? We hang out, we smoke a little, we drink a little, we chat about stuff. And Ken came to me and said he wanted to start a scholarship in the name, hello? Shh. Ken came to me and said he wanted to donate, at the time, $1,000 for a scholarship in his sister's name. But he wanted it to go to a kid who was going into public safety. And because that's what she cared about, drug interdiction and public safety. So we gave the award that year and we've been giving it every year since. This year we've got the Maxwell Bork. Uh, Maxwell Bork is the uh, kid from, oh he's here, thank you very much for being here. Uh, we raised $4,570 for his college education. A large chunk of that came from Ken DeLuca, Michelle DeLuca's brother. And I'll let him say a few words in a couple of seconds. Shh. There you go. But one guy that I haven't mentioned tonight is Dan Strange. Who here knew Dan Strange? Did anybody here know Dan? Dan was at every single bash from the very first. Dan would call me at two o'clock in the morning and say, we lost a police officer in the line of duty, Tom. He's from this place or that place. And his family really needs some help. Let's put a, a, a fund together to help the widow and the kids. And when bash time came, he would walk in the door, hand me a check for $1,000 and say, give it to the kid that you think deserves it the most. Well, Dan passed away of cancer during COVID. And I can't tell you of all the people tonight that I miss being here in this room, whether it's Joe Carroll, or Rosa Lowe, or, or uh, 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 who else did we lose? We lost at least two other people this year. I, I, really, I really miss Dan the most. Because Dan was the guy behind the scenes that made a lot of things happen. And when he was done making things happen, he would point to someone else and say, that, that's the person that deserves the credit. And I was always blown away by that because there are so many people today who are glomming for credit they don't deserve. And then you meet a guy like Dan Strange. And Dan Strange was always willing to give someone else the credit for work that everyone knew he did. So I got a call last week from Jerry Flynn, who's the president of the New England Police Benevolent Association, and they kicked in $1,000 for the very first Dan Strange Memorial Scholarship, which made Maxwell Bork's scholarship go from 3,570 to 4,570, and we'd like to present him with this check from the Valley Patriot viewers, listeners, and everyone else. Thank you. And I would be remiss if I didn't let Ken DeLuca talk a little bit about his sister and why he started this scholarship. I started the scholarship because um, my sister dedicated her whole life to community service and I wanted to see that continue. And um, Max definitely meets the criteria. And um, just remember, just the name on that scholarship is a wonderful, wonderful person. That's it. He's being really humble, but his sister was very dedicated to helping people who were addicted to heroin and addicted to other substances get into treatment programs. And you know, it's really funny how when I look at the program of the things that we're doing tonight, it all kind of falls together and we didn't do, that, do it that way on purpose, it just kind of worked that way. We've got TMF who goes out every night and tries to help people who are homeless and addicted. And then we have Ken DeLuca who has no idea who they are, starting a scholarship in his sister's name who wanted to help people who were addicted. And it all just kind of works together. And you know why? Everybody at the bar, do you know why? Because when you're doing the right thing, God makes sure everything falls into place. 
God makes sure that if you're doing the right thing, if you're making personal sacrifices, if you're helping other people, not because you want something back, not because you want credit, not because you want thanks, but you're helping for the pure sake of helping, and everything else in your life is going to fall into place the way that it needs to fall into place. Thank you, Estella Reyes, for being here. I love you so much. I do. Thank you. And I don't know if Chief Ryder wants to say a few words or Lenny Mera wants to say a few words, but we'd love to get some pictures of Lenny Mera handing the, uh, the certificate to the student, and we'll give either one of them a chance to speak if they want. Oh, thank you, Tom. Listen, you've had enough politician jammering on tonight, so I won't ramble on myself. But thank you for everyone putting in this wonderful, awesome celebration. Thank you, Tom, for giving and being so honorable and generous yourself. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. You raise a lot of money for the best causes and the best people. And uh, for that, we'll be forever grateful. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. I just want to congratulate Max Burke. Tom, thank you. Um, for allowing me to uh, identify a student from Haverhill High School in Woody of Botech who will be uh, doing uh, next. It's my honor to serve on both of those school committees. Um, and Max Bork, you're one of our best at Haverhill High. We're proud of you and congratulations. All right, you guys can disperse. We've got one more to go. Thank you, Lenny. Thank you so much for coming. Chief, thank you. So and it's nice to meet you finally. So Al Malou came to my office a few years ago and said he wanted to start a scholarship for Whittier Tech. Do we have the Whittier Tech envelope here? No, we had it. Al sponsored three scholarships tonight. And he's been sponsoring scholarships for a long time with us. And has very, very rarely been Thanks for it. So please give him a round of applause. And thanks to Al giving us $1,000 in seed money for this scholarship, we took his $1,000, we put it in the bank, and then we announced on Facebook that we had a $1,000 contribution for the Whittier Tech Scholarship. And immediately people started jumping on Facebook and saying, I'm in for 25, I'm in for 50, I'm in for 100. And so over the last three to four weeks, thanks to Alvalo's seed money, we have been able to raise for young Grace Parsons, please come up to the stage. And your, and your mom and dad if they're here, or mom or dad, or mom and stepdad, or stepmom and dad, however it works out, we, we're, we're an equal opportunity here. Thank you, Brenda. So thanks to you guys, um, and of course Lenny Merritt, state representative from Newberry who's here. I, I can't stress enough how, how cool that is. To have a guy come all the way from Newberry, Massachusetts, here to Lawrence, Mass, to help us with our Valley Patriot Bash. That's a testament to all the work you guys have done, thank you. We'll give that one to Grace. So I'm sure that Al has a few words he wants to say, but before he does, I want to announce the amount. Have you been following us on Facebook, Grace? A little bit? That's too bad. We don't want them to follow us on Facebook. We're going to surprise them in the room. We raised $3,675 for her college. And let's have Al present that to her. Grace Parsons is a Haverhill resident and a senior at Whittier Tech. Grace is an exceptional student who ranks at the top of her class and is enrolled in Whittier's most challenging courses. Her vocational program is current culinary arts. Outside the classroom, Grace is a peer leader, a vol volleyball athlete, and a member of the chess club. Additionally, she is in an inductee to the Elite National Technical Honor Society and a shift led at a local Chick-fil-A. So you work at Chick-fil-A, I'll be coming in one of the one. I'll be coming there for my chicken from now on. Grace and her family recently endured a devastating loss. Grace's dad passed away unexpectedly from COVID in January. Shh. It is Grace's desire to make her dad proud every day 
by being the first college graduate in her family. And I can't tell you how proud I am of all of you for coming together, putting your differences aside, kicking money in, so that she can actually accomplish that goal. Thank you, Grace. After graduating from Radio Grace, uh, has planned to attend Johnson and Wales University in Providence, Rhode Island, to continue her culinary art passion. They're all camera. They're all camera shy. Nobody wants to talk. That's awesome. Kills ten minutes out of my program, right? So is my purpose. Because really, I'm only, I only get you guys here in the room every year as an excuse to have an after party. So as long as you understand that I'm not really the good guy here, you guys all kick in money. I don't kick it in dime. Then I take all the credit. We give the scholarships out. Then we get to party afterwards. How much fun is that, right? One of our readers, Al Veu, donated $500 to start a scholarship in memory of Dan Cody Jr., who was killed tragically in an accident on Route 495 just a week before our annual bash in 2018. His family's been waiting very patiently for this award, so I'd like to have all of your attention. Each year, Al contributes to keep the Dan Cody Memorial Scholarship going for students who attended the Thompson Grammar School in North Andover, where one of Dan Cody's children attended at the time. Al's goal was to keep this scholarship going every year in the hopes that Dan's children would be able to receive the scholarship when they graduate from high school. This year, that's gonna happen. Tonight, I'm proud to introduce the man who started the scholarship, the man who donated $1,000 to this scholarship, and in total tonight has donated more, like Tom said, than $3,500. Al Bayou, thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, so I just want to say um, this meant a lot for me at the time, and I, I did not even know um, the Cody family other than my son Jax, who is over here, and um, he was about he was best friends with Evan at the time, and um, you know losing Dan as a, as a father it destroyed me because you know I wouldn't even know what that would be, you know losing a dad of my son so it hit my heartstrings and i knew that evan was you know jax's my son jax's friend and, and i walked into tom's office and i said tom we gotta do something uh this guy was special the, there was a whole community that came to him for him and he was special and i didn't even know the guy and i'm like this guy needs something uh and hence, here we are today. Um, and we, this is probably five years now we've been doing this. And, um, you know, I, I'm just starting to meet the family, and I love them. You know, I said hi to a couple tonight, and Nicole, uh, I just met, you know, recently, and they're such a great family. And uh, I can see it just, just saying hi. Uh, so, to you guys, and to Patrick this year. Good luck, brother. You got this. Thank you, Al. So I didn't know Dan Cody. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I could get up here and pretend that I did, but I didn't. But I knew when Al came to me and said that this was something affecting the community, was trying, he said, what he said was, I want to start this scholarship for a kid that's going to Thompson School in North Andover, which is where my kids went, Andrew and Rachel. And 
I said, why do you want to, why, why for the Thompson School? He said, because that's where his oldest son Patrick is going right now. And if we can keep this scholarship going for like three or four years, when he graduates, we'd like to give this scholarship that's in his dad's name to him. And I thought, wow, that would be really special if we're still doing this four or five years from now. And we are. Patrick Cody, why don't you come on up? And Nicole, why don't you come up, come up to Nicole? Nicole sits on my board of the Lawrence Lions Club, so that's how we knew Nicole. If there's any member of the Cody family that wants to come up to be in the photo shoot, they're all gonna come up, we're gonna line up over there, we'll give you plenty of time to take pictures. Come on, come on. You know, this is really special for me because I, don't, I didn't know Dan, and I didn't know his family. But when we started the scholarship, when Al started the scholarship, I got a call from one of the family members who said, Gee, we wish you'd called us and told us about this because, you know, we could help. And I said, no, you don't understand. Dan just passed away. We, you guys have a lot of things to deal with, with, with the death of Dan. And we don't want you to have to worry about taking care of Dan's kids for college. Let us do that. Let Al do that. Let me do that. And the outpouring of support for Patrick Cody to receive his dad's memorial scholarship, which five other kids have received. You guys have kicked in. People in this room and the people who are not with us have kicked in, in f within four weeks. You guys have kicked in $7,390. And again, I feel so great because a lot of times we give these awards to kids or we give these scholarships to kids or we give awards to people that I know and I'm very touched by it because I know who they are and I understand the pain and I understand the loss. But I didn't know Dan, I didn't know Patrick and I only kind of knew the Cody family through the Cody towing from having my car towed a couple of times. <laughs> but I also knew that when the Exchange Club of Bethuen needed money for scholarships, Cody, always kicked, Cody towing always kicked in. And when the, um, when the Rotary Club needed money for scholarships to sponsor kids that were immigrants here to this country, the Cody family and Cody Towing always kicked in. So I knew them as a family of people who cared about other people. And that made me feel really good that we could do something, anything, no matter how small, to help that family to heal a little bit and to help them with something that if Dan was here, he'd be able to do, but because he's not, the rest of us can maybe kick in and help out. And that is just so special, I think, for everyone that gave, everyone who came tonight, everybody who was involved in this scholarship. This is the highest scholarship we've ever given in 18 years, and I think you all deserve a round of applause for this. Why don't you present him with the little plaque that we made? It's not much, but it's something. We're quiet because they're hugging. And there's a lot of crying going on up here. I love you too, whoever said that. Listen. You know, I, w I didn't say it earlier and I should have. A lot of people thank me for organizing this event. Please don't thank me. I'm way overexposing and way too much thanks as it is. I didn't give a dime to any of these scholarships because my, my adjusted gross income was $16,000 last year, okay? But I happen to know a lot of people who have money. And a very good friend of mine when I was younger, who, a friend of mine who had a lot of money, I said to him, how is it you're able to help so many people? How is it you're able to get so much money? And he said, you don't have to have money. You just have to know people who have money. And I always kept that in the back of my head when we were doing this bash, because I'm always calling people that I know have money and say, hey, we had this great idea to do something really special for somebody, and you can kick in. Nobody has ever said, well, with one exception, but otherwise nobody has ever said no. 
And every single person in this room, you either paid for a ticket, or you donated to a scholarship, or you came because you're a sponsor, because you care about your community. You care about your neighbors, you care about the people around you, and you care about them just a little bit more than you care about yourself. And in today's day and age, that's pretty special. So you all deserve a round of applause. Yes, Nicole would like to call the extended family of all 172 Cody family members that are here to come up to do photos. But I would like, before we get to our final award for the night, then we start the after parties. Trust me, that's going to be fun. Before we do, though, I want to give, we, we normally don't let the kids speak. But Dan Cody has been, your dad, has been such an integral part of this event every year since he passed that I'd like, if you want to say a few words, I'd love to give you the microphone and give you that opportunity if, if you want. I just want to thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I didn't think that it would ever be like this. This is really amazing. Thank you. All right, all, all Cody family members in front of the green room over there. And we've got one more award to present. There is one person in the room that I do want to give a special thank you to. Lawrence City Council and Mark LaPlante is here. And although we don't agree on some stuff, here's what I can tell you about Mark LaPlante. There is literally nobody in the 300 year history of the city of Lawrence who has done more to help the veterans of the city of Lawrence than Lawrence City Council and Mark LaPlante, who wrote a book and did a ton of research on World War I veterans, not two, World War I veterans, the Forgotten War. And, and he's done an awful lot to make sure that all over the city of Lawrence, you will see these little squares, you will see these little signs that have the names of Lawrence residents who died in World War I, who previously nobody even knew who they were. So I want to thank Michael Plant for being here tonight. I know he voted against us too today, but I still love you because you are a community hero, and I really mean that. And with all the TNF people are here, he voted against us Tuesday night. But let me tell you something. If you guys ever needed something and you called Mark, he will help you. Because that's the kind of person that he is. And I've known him for about 35 or more years since he was Tower Hill Mark LaPlante, when we didn't really like all that much. We liked him better when he became South Lawrence Mark LaPlante. But I hate to forget anybody, so if I forgot anybody, please someone come up and tell me that I forgot someone. I hate to forget anyone. Are we at the last one? All right, I'm gonna turn it over to our MC, Jet Jaina! So we are winding it down, we're in our last award. Uh, thank you for everybody for your patience. I know it was a long night, but well deserved and a lot of great things happened. Um, so, I do want to announce that the raffle will be announced right after the next and final award. So all of you who purchased a ticket, be sure to stay so you hear if you're the winner or not. Uh, thank you, Bash Committee, for putting everything together. Uh, we want at the front of the stage, Carl Farrington. Oh! Members of the Lawrence Police. Chief Ryder. Chief McNamara. Chief Solomon. Marcos Devers. Guy Cooper. Mayor DePena. And any member of the Lawrence City Council all of whom are still left, we would like, up here. Uh, as many of you know, 613 days ago, I was uh, a victim of a crime in Lawrence. I am a Lawrence police officer, and I have been since 2000, 1999. Um, and I, in the process of getting a double knee replacement, I've had a foot fusion, I've had brain bleeds and wrist injuries and hip injuries. Um, and first off, I am not a politician, but I appreciate every one of you who have reached out to me. Uh, Mark LaPlante, uh, Estella Reyes. Excuse me a second. Uh, the 
mayor has reached out to me, and I appreciate that. Um, it's um, just he was concerned about my my injuries and how I'm healing. I want to say a special thank you to Michael Plant. Um, through my years of working in the city, he's always been a stand-up individual. Like I said, I don't know politics, I don't know his politics. I just know on the night of the um, gas explosions and the following days, he was out there every night. Um, I, I drove him around the city. He wanted to check everything out. It was a strange, strange, strange feeling. And he was on that night, on the phone all night long, making calls, making sure people are okay, finding out what to do, how to do it. And that was tremendous. And I want to thank my pit bull over here, over in uh, East Haverhill Street area. Uh, we love you, Estella. <laughs> who used to uh, flag me down by standing in front of my cruise and saying, stop right now, stop right now, I got a complaint. And she'd go on and on and on and on and on and on. I'm like, slow down, slow down. And she'd tell me everything that she was concerned about in her neighborhood, her area. And this was before I knew she was a councilwoman, or I, I think this was even before you were a councilwoman. And, um, and it was just to see people like that that's so concerned with the city was amazing. And, you know, I'm going to miss that, unfortunately, you know, if I don't return. But uh, I, uh, I just wanted to say thank you to them. Uh, but we are here. For Officer Doobie, uh, Officer Myers, who helped save my life that I um, had a compound fracture on my foot. My foot was pretty much ripped off. Tell me what happened. Oh, uh, it was a breaking and entry in progress. Uh, Officer Doobie arrived first with his, um, his trainee, his rookie. Uh, they start confronting some possible suspects who then fled the officer and uh, struck me up against the side of my cruiser pinning me, squishing me, throwing my body fixed 15 feet or more. I landed on my head, uh, my legs were zigzag, my ankle was torn off, uh, I was out cold. Um, and Officer Doobie here took action immediately to try to apprehend the suspects, uh, returned, demanding ambulances immediately, which by his voice alone, woke the whole city up uh, to get help on the way, which was a tremendous help in saving my life, and I appreciate that too, thank you. Obviously, he's been around 20, how many years? 26 years also, uh, and I've seen him do tremendous things in the city before. I saw him jump in the middle of the river, trying to save a, a suspect, uh, is somebody that was a suspect and then turns into a victim who was drowning. And uh, what service were you in the Marines? He was a Marine uh, swimmer. And uh, swam right out there and uh, apprehended and saved a life that day. Did you ever get recognition for that? No. Did you? Good. And uh, he's just always been a, a stand up guy. Uh, that night also, uh, Officer Myers was there. Uh, he was helped save my life. He put a big tourniquet around my upper thigh. He did a combat wrap on my compound fracture, which was bleeding tremendously. Uh, he can't be here this evening. He's in additional training right now for medic, uh, I forget the terminology, medic reasons. He's uh, in training. So he saved my life by keeping the blood in me, wrapping me up, protecting me from uh, further. Um, blood loss, I should say, but uh, Tom Duggan has presented me this award in the past for all my hard work, and I'm glad that I can be part of this tonight and present it to Officer Doobie, uh, the Officer Tom Duggan Senior uh, Hero of Public Safety Award to Tim Doobie. The officers of Lawrence, uh, my union, uh, they've been stand-up guys, protecting me, saving me um, from the injuries that I had and being a, a moral support, which has been very hard over the last 613 days. Um, 
So without them, I probably wouldn't have survived the after effects of this. So thank you. And I thank all of you that uh, called me, even Debo. Wish me well. Uh, and again, and it wasn't just these guys, it was also the firefighters, the EMTs, um, the med flight people, the Lawrence General Hospital people, the people down at Beth Israel. Uh, they did tremendous work, and please, please support the public safety. Uh, it really matters. And these guys are also part of the public safety because they, they are concerned. They hear your complaints. They come to the police, they go to the fire, they go to the inspectional services, and everybody that helps protect the city. And they're really stand-up people, so thank you. So I don't know if you guys know this, but if there's anybody who is um, uh, following the situation of how Carl got hurt, and the guys that saved him. We're gonna have the firefighters that were involved in that come up next in a second. We would love to have the city council and the mayor stand with Carl Farrington against the police administration to stop them from forcing him into retirement. And believe it or not, Debo Brown has something to say. I come before you tonight to testify in front of all of you that Carl Farrington is not retiring. You are not retiring, Papa, on my watch. You are going to continue to serve the city of Lawrence. We are going to make sure that we find a place for you to continue to do what you do every morning when you put that badge on to proudly serve the citizens of Lawrence. Carl, we love you. You're not going nowhere, baby. If we can, again, this is something that is personal to my heart. And I can't stress this enough. Carl, you know that first interaction to the last interaction was entirely different. But I've never lied to you. I've never lied to any one of you guys as first responders and city officials in this city. Carl, you ain't going nowhere. Forget about that. You got many more years to proudly serve the city of Lawrence. Standing ovation again for this man who proudly serves the city of Lawrence day in and day out. Carl, we love you. And again, I promise you in front of all of these people, in front of all of your comrades, I will not allow you to retire. It's not an option, buddy. Okay, so if you bought tickets to the 50-50, your take, if you win, is $685. That's a lot of money. That's like rent money. If you win, we do not expect you to give it back. So if you wanna, if you wanna keep the money, please keep the money, because there are people in this room that could use it way more than I could. If you do give it back, I'm going to add it to the Whittier Scholarship because she was the lowest amount on the, on the tote board tonight. But if you decide to keep it, we're not going to hold it against you. We're going to congratulate you. I can't read the numbers. It's too small and I'm too old. It's 4575113. 4575113. Four, five, four, five, Six hundred. Alva Lowe, are you kidding me? Alva Lowe, Alva Lowe. That's just totally awesome. You know what? When a guy like that wins an award, that makes me feel good when he wins something. Our highest donor in the room, our highest donor in the room, and he won the 50-50. You're awesome. Carl yeah. Farrington, come back up here and explain why uh, firefighter Mendonca, uh, firefighter Ventura, and firefighter La Valley deserve the Tom Duggan Award. And I want to say a couple of words just real quick because we're at the end of the program, right? My father was killed in 1990. He was murdered in the city of Lawrence. And every year since, we've been giving an award in his name. 
to police officers and firefighters throughout the Merrimack Valley, including Guy Cooper from Haverhill, who's here tonight, who got the 2019 award. Is there anybody else who's gotten this award? Joe Solomon, I know, has gotten this award. Is there anybody else who's gotten this tall officer Tom Duggan award in the room tonight? That's too bad, they usually do all come, but it's after COVID, so we got, this is a kind of a, a free pass here. Every year my family comes, every year we put the banner up, and every year we remember my dad, because he was a guy who was underappreciated and overworked. He worked three side jobs on top of doing his regular shift on the department. And he took the sergeant's exam three times. But because he didn't fit with the political structure of the police department, he was passed over three times. So he never made sergeant. But that was good for the rest of us because he was an excellent street cop. And here we are 32 years after his death, in fact, 32 years ago, last week, was his, was his murder. 32 years later, I still have people come over to me at Market Basket or Dunkin' Donuts and say, I knew your father, and he was a great cop, and I really miss him. And 32 years, I don't think anyone's gonna remember me five, years, five minutes after I'm dead, but it means an awful lot to know that 32 years after my dad died, there are still people thinking about him and talking about him. And so every year at the end of this event, as excited as we are about the after parties, we always wrap up with our final Officer Tom Duggan Hero Public Safety Award for firefighters and police officers who not only have done something heroic, but they're underappreciated by their own department. And by the way, I did call the fire chief tonight. I called him, I didn't call him tonight, but I called him to be in the room tonight. And I'm, I'm sad that he's not here. He should be here, um, but he's not. But we are here to congratulate the firefighters that responded and saved our friend, Officer Tom Duggan, Senior Hero Veteran Award winner from 2017, Kyle Farrington. When he needed it, they were there for him. And I'm gonna turn this over to Carl to wrap up the night. So again, that evening of August 3rd, 2020, uh, after I was struck, I hit the ground and I was knocked out for quite a few minutes from what I understand. When I awoke, I saw guys that I worked with every day for 20 years, freaked out, running around, and they looked concerned, upset, and I just remember looking back and forth up at them, going, this cannot be good. And they were doing their job. They were being professional. They were saving my life. But at the same time, you could see the emotion in them. Uh, that I do remember. Um, the, just, just the panic. But I've seen them work every day, not panicking. I've seen them work and do their job every day. Professionals saving people's lives every day. Tom goes out there and he broadcasts as much as he can. That's less than 0.01% of what reality is. Reality is that we're out there every day, 24 hours a day, trying to save lives, trying to help people. And that's what these guys did that night. And part of what they did was save my life. And I thank them for that. I just remember that night very clearly. It was just before midnight, and Firefighter Mendoza is not my regular crew member, and Firefighter um, Wilson Ventura is not my regular firefighter. They were, uh, they were on overtimes, or they were detailed from other stations. I was on ladder five across from the police station. And simultaneous, well, the way fate brought us to you that time, and on a little bit of a delay, and I'll tell you why, um, simultaneous alarms came in. We had a box alarm go out for the fire department. We sent five trucks out to an Abbott Street address for smoke in the house. It turned out to be a food on the stove situation. But all of the South Lawrence was, um, 
the apparatus was, you know, in, uh, taken up at that point. So they dispatched Ladder 5 from across the city. So there was a little bit of a delay of us getting there, but when we heard it come in, it was for a, an officer involved shooting with an officer down. That was the official broadcast that we had on the radio, and so obviously we stepped it up. My heart was racing a thousand miles a minute, and I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go, because we work side by side with these guys all the time, and women, and um, we got on scene, and Carl was in the driveway, and luckily, like I said, there was a little bit of delay. Engine 9 would have been coming from Bailey Street. They would have been there first. But um, his fellow officers applying a tourniquet, military training, saved his life. We didn't save God's life. But we were there as fast as we could possibly be there. And our hearts were in our throats. And like Cal said, the looks on you. I didn't realize it, but you saw the looks on our faces because we knew you had a very serious leg injury. And um, the fact that the officers put a tourniquet on him, is, I can't stress it out, probably did save his life. It was a very, very bad situation. But we offered comfort and care. We helped package Officer Farrington and get him ready for transport. And again, you know, being a brother in arms with these guys, fire, police, it doesn't matter, EMS, they're all amazing in this city because it's, Training. I mean, we just do it all day long, every day. We see it all. There's no way around it. So we are like the varsity in the Merrimack Valley. And this, that's, I always say that, we're the varsity. You're on your side and on our side. My son is a one-year cop who's reaching, he's 23 years old. He's reaching his probationary uh, period next week. I couldn't be more proud of him. And he's working with some of the finest officers you'll ever find in this country. I'll tell you right now. Okay? So, congratulations to you. Um, it's great to see you. And um, we were very concerned that night. But, you know, we our, our training goes across department lines. So, it doesn't matter if I'm working with my regular crew, if I'm working with Firefighter Mendoza, uh, Wilson Ventura. We're all on the same page. And we respond, and we don't ask questions, but when it's one of ours, you know, it, it was definitely, it raises the bar, so. <laughs> Often, Firefighter Mendoza declines that microphone. So, thank you very much, I appreciate it. So I am proud, thank you, uh, Santi. Santiago Reyes Cruz is here, he's my, my new business partner, I don't know if you guys know that, but he's here, and I want to say hi to him, he was his dad. Um, this award means so much to me every year, because it's something that we give in memory of my dad, and sometimes I think we give these awards to people who don't understand how much it really means to me. So I want to I wanna reiterate today how much this means to me, because, you know, I, one of my pains growing up was listening to my dad talk about all the amazing things he did as a Lawrence cop, and then other people would get promoted over him, or other people would get credit for what he did. And so I carried through my whole life this idea of making sure that we, that I personally would go out of my way to try and help people that were underappreciated. Because I know how much pain my dad felt for all the work that he did. And he, and he, and he was never the guy that was thanked. He was never the guy that got the award. There was always somebody passed over, he, that he was passed over for that was politically connected or something. And so, you know, I, I got a call from Carl Farrington who said, you know, these guys should have gotten the, the Exchange Club Award, and they didn't. So, do you think you could give me the Officer Tom Duggan Award? I'm so proud to have been able to say yes. So I'm gonna present this to you guys now.